Ah, there we go. Well, hello there. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, well, I'm Clairvo Calico, and today we're playing Chaos Child. Finally, the end of it. <laughs> um, so last time, last time we discovered the killer, it was Serika, and um. Oh, and I think last time we found out that Serika was someone we made up. Oh, and here's my cat. Hi, kitty. You got- oh, I should- Here, let's do that. Maybe it won't play music after, after a while if I do that. Um... Hold on. Where was I? My cat distracted me. Did you distract me? Oop. Oh yeah, the Serika was m made up, kinda? Like we, the, the character we play as. We real booted her. Um... And then... Yeah, you know what? Let's go in. Let's go in. Yeah, let's go to extra. What? It's because I haven't gotten any endings or anything. Here's... My cat's climbing. Yes. Oh, yeah, and... We're, we... We are being framed as a killer. That's... A uh, hi. You got something else to say, kitty? No, she doesn't. Maybe she might say something else later. A little after 4 p.m. Hold on, I gotta make these words bigger. There we go. Seven hours has had passed since the beaming. And then I also gotta move over a little bit. Hold on. There we go. So you can see all the words. Or so I could see all the words. Oh, uh-oh. You fall over here. Sorry, right, you didn't fall that much. Now she's going to her pillow. Maybe. Her blanket. Who knows? Who knows with this kitty? Alright. Seven hours had passed since the beginning of the fest fe festivities, and even as the sun began to set, they showed no signs of slowing down. Lines had started forming in front of every food stand and restaurant around lunchtime, and they were all still packed. Packed with what? There were over 30 concerts from huge thousand-seat venues with major artists. So tiny little bars with only a dozen or so seats. Each one was st was standing room only. A guerrilla performance artists would approach the crowds, hoping to attract customers, and in turn, attract crowds of their own. Over 80,000 people who were still in attendance at the festival, which had gone, off, which had gone far beyond the uh, uh, organizers' wildest expectations. There were the usual issues associated with big events like minor fights and lost children, but there had been no major problems so far. Yeah, so far. Um, okay, good, my microphone's on. I, <laughs> I wasn't sure I turned the microphone on, but yeah, now I am. The police from Shivya Station helped things safe. Yeah, help, help, help keep things safe. But the biggest factor was the volunteer staff. 
the organizers had been recruiting volunteers to the last minute to handle the crowds, keeping everyone safe and in a mood in a mood to spend money. Free me, kitty. She's got my arm. <laughs> Many of the volunteers were victims of the original disaster. And the experience they'd gained in Earthquake had taught them how to get along and work with other people. When a major band had made a surprise appearance at the stage in front of the 107, there, there was a mild panic, but the volunteers formed a human wall to keep the people in, in the crowd safe. That's what the leader of the volunteers had said to an, an interviewer who'd happened to be at the scene. He was an honest and sincere man. He was speaking from the heart, and he didn't mean anything more than what he said. But his words brought to mind a certain name and a certain face, both among the people who saw him on TV and among those who heard him directly. The word that had, the word that had made them think of the name was, of course, death. Everyone there was hoping for the festival to succeed. But at the same time, they hadn't caused a big problem yet. But there was one there was one big concern on everyone's mind. Hold on, I got a box here. There we go. I opened it. I opened a box. There we go. Alright, alright, alright. Let's get back. <laughs> when a girl and her boyfriend left Shibuya Station heading for the stage at the cultural hall, they saw a group of people wearing eerie masks. There were over a dozen of them, and then another group came from another direction. Suddenly, there were several dozen identical masks, identical t-shirts, the faces of two fat men overlapping. It was... How'd they do that? The sumo stickers. How'd they put a sticker on their mask? I'm just kidding. They said nothing. But anyone who got close, whether by accident or because they were... Or, or because they wanted to get a picture, would flinch away as they heard an eerie sound created as the sumos breathed beneath their masks. The man at the... Head of the group looked around and then approached a nearby streetlight. <sighs> Blue Book Christmas. Is that a movie? Oh. What's going on here? I don't have. Here, I'll point. I'll point with my head. What's going on here? It's some movie, it must be. A made-up movie. Then he took something out of his pocket and stuck it on the light. It was a sumo sticker. The owner of a nearby crepe stall saw this and frowned, but was too scared by their appearance to say anything. He quickly went back to dealing with his customers. It was something he'd seen again and again since the festival started. The only ones who saw it were people who, like him who stood in one place the whole day. As they ran their business, the majority of attendees caught up in the following, in the following crowds saw nothing. 
But if you were to take all the stickers placed on the grounds, on the uh, on the directions, on the street lights, on the walls, you'd have enough to cover the huge TVs at Shibuya Scramble Crossing. The stickers were slowly taking over, spreading even even to places where no one could see them. They were like a physical man ma manifestation of all negative emotions that lurk within the attendees. Then it became night. It was about three hours later, around 7.30pm, when they finally exploded. What, the stickers? It happened at a place that had been set up for the... The silent prayer, prayer that would end the festival. Right in front of the memorial. Really? Where is he? I don't see him. He's still not here. They said he was here. A little after 9 p.m., Serika arrived at. He 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 car he 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 car he he car I probably said that wrong. Uh, most of the attendees had gone elsewhere, and it wasn't as busy as it had been earlier in the day. She looked around and listened to the thoughts of the passerbys. What are they thinking? あいつ本当にどっかで死ぬのかよ。逃げ出したんじゃねえの? Serika whispered as she listened to the worthless, worthless thoughts around her. The couple, a few feet away, glanced over at her, but quickly turned away. <laughs> Serika closed her eyes so she could concentrate only on the thoughts around her. As of 9pm, all the concerts and street performances, as well as... A few of the stalls were closing up. The festival was nearing its end. After this, the attendees would gather at the at the specified time for a moment of silent prayer, and then the festival would be over. Now on sale, what's on sale? Uh, the crowd seemed to be heading toward the station and the memorial. There were too many people still here for for them all to fit in the Memorial Plaza. So the big VIPs, as well as the families of the victims of the quake, would gather at the memorial itself while everyone else would watch the proceedings on the TV in front of the station. <laughs> Both of the TVs in front of the station and the memorial park were near the. He. 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 He carry. He. He carry. What? I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know if I said that right. Uh, but the park was just a little closer, and anything that happened at the park would be replayed for people watching on TV. In other words, more people would see it. 
おそらくさっきの男もそのための道具 Several hours ago, she heard that、uh, Mayashiro had appeared in front of the memorial. But she quickly learned that, it was a, that, that the report was mistaken. It was a fake, a man pretending to be Mayashiro who worshipped him as a messiah, but the man himself had looked nothing like Mayashiro. Yet, for some reason, the media had decided to report it as. Ta Takaru Maeshido himself appearing at the memorial as a result, security around the park and plaza had been strengthened. And as a result of that, another rumor was spread this time that Maeshido would be appearing there. It was almost certainly part of、uh, Sakuma's plot. Serika opened her eyes and rubbed her stomach as to check for,、uh, on her injury. It was almost 24 hours since Sakuma had sliced open her,、uh, open her stomach. She still wasn't in top shape. She had lost a lot of blood, and the dull pain in her head had resulted,、uh, re result, resulted from. Re re Re、resisting Sakuma's powers wouldn't come back the second she let her guard down. <sighs> This had been the result of her attacking him on top, but uh, uh, in uh, attacking him in top from last night. She'd survived working with the committee this long, so she couldn't shake her logical. And the very realistic doubts. Could she really kill Saku Sa Sa Sakuma? <laughs> I don't know. She believed in herself. Maybe she could.、Mm -hmm. A thought suddenly came into her mind, and she frowned suspiciously. That was strange. She hadn't been trying to read anyone's mind. It was from somewhere in her field of vision. Really cool. What would be a really cool way? <laughs> Negative thoughts flowed into her mind one after another. They were strong and, and vast in number. It was as if someone had combined all the final thoughts of all the people she'd killed. <laughs> There's all those guys. She forced herself to look in the direction of the thoughts and saw the group wearing the sumo sticker masks. She tried to squeeze them out of her mind, but they slipped past her and echoed in, in, in her head once more. Miyashiro Takuru, Miyashiro Takuru. Dede koi, tanoshimase te kure. Shine, 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 kakko yoku shine. Only strong thoughts and desires could create this effect. It was as if all these feelings had formed into one single strong emotion a desire for a taku,、uh, ta Takaru Mayashiro to appear. For the first time in a very, very long time, Seriko was terrified. She could feel herself break out in, into a cold sweat. Her logical and realistic doubts vanished. It didn't matter if she was capable of killing him or not. She had to kill him. Maishiro had to survive. And for that, Sakuma had to die, and soon. So, so, so. 
She looked at her phone and saw that it was past 9.30 p.m. Everyone inside the theater had probably been let out. Shibuya, the Hikari Wo building, the 11th floor, the entrance to the theater cube. Cube, it's a cube! This room was also the entrance to the office floor, and it was always crowded with people. But not right now. Nobody's in here, except these plants. Are they hiding in the plants? But there was no one here. In, in, there was no one here save a lone employee and single security guard. The festival event in the theater had finished at 9 p.m. And there was no other plans to use it. Oh, but you know who else is in here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. The do the do the do Whoa! Where should I go? Out the door! Wee! <laughs> All right. Yeet. Yeah. The festival event in the theater had finished up at 9 p.m. and there was no other plans to use it. What does he? The floor was lit up, giving it classy design and elegant atmosphere. It didn't at all match what was about to happen inside the theater. Because... By the time this was over, one of them will be dead on the floor. <laughs> Sirika stood in front of the co convenience store on the floor and waited for the time to come. There was no sign of Sakuma. By then, a little after 10 p.m., she realized something was wrong. What? Oh. It's dark now. Is that what? The employee and security guard at the front desk suddenly started to leave. They dropped what they were carrying and began to stagger out. As if they weren't thinking about anything. <laughs> Her eyes went wide as she immediately tried to read their minds. What are you thinking? <laughs> she felt a sharp pain in her head when she did. They really weren't thinking about anything. There wasn't even the meaningless subconscious noise that all humans produce. Nobody was ever like this. Nobody normal, that is. <laughs> The two of them walked to the escalator as if they were in a daze, and then disappeared. How did they disappear? Did they, um, fade out? Did they turn the dust? No, they probably walked out, but what if? What if? <laughs> All that was left was empty silence. <laughs> Who's that? A printer? <laughs> Another violent pain struck her. This didn't make sense. They'd already vanished. There was no reason why she should be hearing their thoughts. Where was this heavy strain coming from? <laughs> She felt something very strange in her mind and body.
And then, she saw her left hand slowly begin to move without her controlling it. The end. Where are we going? Shinjo was out of breath. He'd run back to Alba Dorn to take the place of the other officer who I hadn't seen because I was in Uki's room. I could tell he'd been literally running all around all day. よし。今から数時間ここにいるのは俺だけだ。外にいたマスコミ連中にも偽の情報を捕まえておいた。今なら誰もいない。車でここを出られる。宮城や有村は友かく。後で交代した時、山添や立花優斗がいなくなっていること
felt like Arimura didn't want to talk about her family, and I hadn't brought up- uh, I hadn't brought the subject up. So, I had a vague sense that they weren't on good terms, but I didn't know anything else. Okay, ネイバーシ。言うと思ってれて行きますから。うん。ちゃんにウキスポークアップ。シパスまマスタベンネーバスビカズシー Clutch his hand even tighter. She was acting a little strange, but it was also cute to see how much she cared. I couldn't help but smile. I looked at Shinjo and saw that his expression was much the same as mine. Yuto nodded. And then he looked at me. Takuru-ni-chan. What? Hmm? O-Otou-san wa doko ni iru no? Daijoubu na no? I don't know. I think he's evil now. Suddenly, I didn't know what to say. Yuto didn't know anything about what was going on. Nor did Uki who was also looking at me, expecting an answer. It hurt to see how worried they looked. All I could do was tell myself that I couldn't make it any better. I could tell Yuto was struggling with his feelings. And now it was his turn to grasp Uki's hand tightly. The two of them must have felt the exact same way as they went to their rooms, still holding each other's hands. Jinja looked at me with a pained expression. Of course, that was a lie, but Shinjo was nice enough not to say anything. Kunisato stared at the hallway where Uki and Yuto had just left as she spoke. I could tell from the way she was acting it had something to do with Dad. I'd remember the news I'd just seen on my tablet. The TV news and Twitter had all been talking about how I'd appeared at the memorial park. But of course, that was a lie. I was right here. Shinjo seemed to know what he was... Uh, what he was getting at. He looked out the hallway, too. She nodded. タイミング的には、狂言者なんていくら湧いてもおかしくないが、仮にも、宮城拓郎になりきろうとした人間だ。何の工夫もなく名前だけを語ったのが気になってな。宮城との違いなんて、遠目からでも一発でわかるはずだ
It's true uh, that he wasn't a chaos child syndrome patient, Shinjo said. That was confusing. When I'd seen the man on my tablet, his height and age had been mostly the same as mine. From a distance, it would have been hard to tell us apart. And what did chaos child syndrome have to do with it? When that was just a type of PTSD? Kunisato tapped at her temples. It was also strange to see how easily Shinjo agreed to keep an innocent man locked up. He pointed to the clock before I could ask any questions. It was 10 p.m. No one's here. Maybe if we zoom our eyes in, like binoculars. I opened the door to Nono's room to tell Arimura it was time to go. But no one was there. The lights were off too. Was she done talking on the phone? Well, then where did she go? She. Where? <laughs> Excuse me. Which would mean she was having Kazuki get the last of their things together. So she'd be in the dining room or maybe Uki's room? Come to think of it. Kazuki wasn't involved in this case directly. But she was helping a lot just because she was a member of the newspaper club. Still, I couldn't ask her to come with us. While we'd been waiting for Shinjo, she'd tried to tell us that she'd come too. Of course, using only a series of mumbles and gestures like always. But I refused. Though I was grateful from the bottom of my heart. She seemed unsatisfied, but I'd finally gotten her to agree to it by promising to keep it in, uh, keep it in touch. And... Come straight to her if we needed help. I couldn't cause any more trouble for someone who wasn't part of the case. I was suddenly conscious of the smells in Nono's room. Without bothering to turn on the lights, I shut the door behind me and walked over to, the, to her desk. I ran my hand along it, and only then did I realize it was the first time I had been in here since her death. That's right. Nono wasn't supposed to be part of the case. I knew that. He was right. She wasn't supposed to die. There was no reason. She... Whoa. Stuff fell over for no reason. There was no reason she deserved to die. She was simply killed because she learned Serika's secret. What was her real goal? I remember what Kunisato had asked me this afternoon. What was she really after? <laughs> I almost screamed as I heard a loud noise from inside my bag. It was the sound of my phone vibrating. I quickly flipped over the bag and spilled its contents onto the floor. <laughs> That's how I get stuff out of my bag all the time. I make a big mess every time. Keep lots of things in the bag. Um, what do I keep in there? I'll keep... I keep, um... I 
Madonna just stuff. It, it's full of leaves. I filled I filled my bag full of leaves. And there's one phone in there. Alright. I picked up the phone off the floor and read the words Unlist a caller in the darkness. It was kind of creepy. I did not have a good feeling about this. Afraid I touched the answer button. Who is it? What? I moved the phone away from my ear in surprise. It was Serika. There was no mistaking it. I checked the time on my phone without even thinking about it. What time is it? Ten! Oh, three! I realized how hard my heart was beating. And then I put the phone back up to my ear. I heard a sudden abrupt noise. She, had she dropped her phone or had something happened? I listened carefully as not to miss a single sound. My hands were trembling, tr trembling violently. I hated it. And after I waited a moment. No. I, yeah, actually, I am listening. Her voice was somehow weak and feeble. Something was off about the way she was acting. It was the same thing she just said. Maybe I should stop listening. What? I wasn't listening. What'd you say? Just kidding. <laughs> I could not hear- okay, 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 let's- <laughs> I could hear the sound of the words she made, but I couldn't understand the meaning of the words themselves. But for some reason my hand stopped shaking and it suddenly seemed like everything around me faded away into a white blur. What? I wasn't listening! Okay, okay. Am I gonna sneeze? I feel like I might. <clears throat> no. The words were stuck in my throat. I couldn't speak. Why'd you do that? Once again, I could hear the words, but I didn't understand them. Six years ago, Shiba Earthquake, Shelter, uh, Real Parents. Huh? What? My cheeks suddenly felt hot, and... My blurry vision came back into focus in the dark room. Only then did I realize what she'd said. But what I felt wasn't rage. <laughs> Why not? It was an important event to from my past, but one I'd totally forgotten. My parents hadn't died in the earthquake, so when I'd murdered them at the shelter. It was what Nono had refused to tell me when I'd just woken up from my coma. That was why she'd lied to me. 
And that's why I had run away from Alba Dorm and gone to live in Mayashita Park. Donde? I repeated. Why would she do that? Why would she tell me that now? All I could hear was her pained breathing. I kept waiting anyway. I couldn't hang up the call. I could! I'll hang up! Alright. <laughs> Why not? It's a thing to do. We all got our hobbies. I was <laughs> just kidding. I yelled at Serika as she repeated herself. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Just hang hung up, huh? Suddenly, the call ended. She'd hung up. I tried to call back and realized it was impossible. It was an unlisted number. <laughs> well, why are you asking me? I whispered, knowing I wouldn't get an answer. Really? Point in the hell? What was the point in calling me like that? No. But there was a bigger question. Why? Why were any of us? <laughs> That day, I happened to meet my parents at the shelter. And then I had a terrible headache. That was probably when Serika was born. And then my parents were murdered at the shelter. Which would mean... That she murdered them right after I created her. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think I need some water. There we go. My thoughts were a mess, and it was hard to think, but something told me I had to figure this out. Serika said her goal was to keep me alive. But would killing my parents help me with that? Maybe. Mom and Dad were trying to get me out of the shelter. Killing them would make them less likely to survive, and not more, just like Kunisato said. It didn't make sense. That's right. What Serika was saying didn't make sense. The very first thing she'd done after being born didn't make any sense. It's all making sense now. Which meant... What was it then? Suddenly I found myself looking at the picture on my phone. Wasn't the it was the photo of me and my family from Alba Dorm. It was the same as what happened with Nono. Sure, she'd figured out who Serika was. There. But if Serika's goal was to keep me alive, would that mean killing Nono? Nono would always try her best to protect me. She'd even risk her own life to do so, which 
would mean that for Serika, it would be better to keep her alive. She could have just done what it, what they did with Ito and used mind control to alter his memories about her re re real identity. So why did she? Why did she have to kill Nano? We got lots of questions now. Did she have some other goal? Was that why she had to take Nono's life? If that was the case, then I... I could feel a certain desire welling up within me. One I hadn't felt in a long, long time. I would find out why. And I would find out if my ridiculous idea was true. And for that to happen, I have to go there. No matter how things end up. <laughs> yeah. I checked the time on my phone again. How long have we been standing there? It's 10 or 3? 10 10. Ten AM? Whoa, hope we've been standing there for a long time. Alright. Uh, things there there, huh? there were eighteen minutes left until the moment when everything began. Ha ha ha. I laughed a little and ran my hand along Nono's desk again. Was I betraying Nono again? Ask her. Oh wait. If she was still alive, would she have slapped me across the face if she found out about it? You lied too in the end. You lied to protect me. So, I'm going to do the same. Because it's about you and me. And, and, wait, it's about you? And you mean everything to me. This is... Th this, this is about the reason why you died. Of course, thinking what I was about to do terrified me. But I wasn't going to change my mind, no matter what! <laughs> what? Ow. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Surprisingly, it was Ayamura, not Nono, who slapped me. She hit me so hard the impact it traveled all the way to my ears and made them ring. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> I put my hand to my cheek where she'd struck me and felt a little hot. I left because it hadn't hurt and uh, 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 hurt as hard as when Nono did it. Nono was used to slapping people's cheeks after all. Or maybe she was just really strong. But Arimura seemed to think I was laughing because I wasn't worried at all. Her sh shoulders shook more violently with rage. わかってるでしょ? <laughs> Armor was about out of breath and seriously angry. She was worried about me. Uki and Yuto were standing next to her, looking worried. I leaned down so I was at their height. 
話を聞きに行くだけっていうのは本当だからでもその先は嘘だろうお前は多分殺される Probably. 久野里さん Of course I knew that There was a good chance I'd be killed And dad would be the one who killed me But I wished she wouldn't say it in front of Uki and Yuta お前は喧嘩すらしたことがない違うかはいでも I had to go My head knew it was stupid My heart was filled with terror But there's something even deeper that drove me forward クルス先輩はそんなこと絶対に望んでないウキから手紙のこと聞いたんです。What letter? そっか。クルス先輩の気持ち、踏みにじるんですかそうだな。あいつ、きっと怒ると思うけど。And she'd probably slap me hard across the face like Uki just did. でも、僕は行くよ。Armura looked like she was about to raise her hand again. But then she stopped, clenched into a fist, and then punched her right, 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 right in the nose. Oh, and lowered it. Her eyes were a little red as she glared at me. We're all asking why. Come on. We're all asking why, and none of us are getting answers. Her voice was so soft I could barely hear it. I lowered my head, unable even to even look at her. Uki and Yuto's thing. Tell me. I'm sorry. 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 You're terrible, she whispered as she left the room. <gasps> Someone suddenly waved something in front of my face, and it was, and I left back. Kazuki had come up next to me. I wasn't sure when. She always surprised me like this. Oh, oh my. Mada <laughs> Yeah, what are you still doing here? I can't ne leave you all here, her face seemed to say. <laughs> She was hiding a piece of candy on a stick. A lollipop? How many of these did she have? And they're all unwrapped. I couldn't refuse her, so I took it and put it in my pocket. I'd probably never eat it, though. I didn't think she'd do it, but I didn't want her going with with the two of them. I'd feel terrible for her family if that happened. <sighs> she nodded like she always did. I tried to make sure that was a yes before, but before I could, she ran out of the room after Arimura. Kunisato was here too, so it would be okay, right? She would make it home, right? Yuto spoke up, afraid as he saw me watch her go. To be honest, I wasn't sure what to say. Anything I said felt it would. Just make him more nervous. I tried to choose my words carefully. But in the end, this was all I could come up with. I 
I could tell from his face that he realized it was one of, one of the white lies that adults often tell children. But he didn't say anything. He just looked at me with eyes that were redder than Arimura's. You're going to be waiting a long time. Probably. Depending on how things go, right? And maybe Uki's hand on his gave him strength because he was he finally forced himself to say one last thing. I'm sorry, Yuto. Thanks, Uki. Get out of here. I checked the time. There wasn't much time left. And if I stayed here any longer, my resolve would begin to waver. I nodded one last time at the two of them, then turned around. It was decided that Shinjo would drive me to... H H Hikaruo. I wanted him to take the others to A A Akihabara as soon as possible, but I didn't see how I could get through the area around Shibuya Station on my own. Miyashiro. What? Oh, right, yeah? Mm hmm As I left to get into the car, Kunisato called to me from behind. I put my hand inside my pocket to check. Of course it was there. I chuckled. That was exactly what I expected her to say. I didn't know if I'd find anything, but I promised that I would. お前を渋谷から脱出させるよう言われている。それを承諾したのは能力者を渋谷から出せば委員会に近づけるという。あいつの現地があったからだ。はい。かと言って。お前自身がそれに逆らう決断をするのなら。それを止める義理はない。別に
And Kunisoto probably had a theory of her own. And one she was reluctant to share. But in the end, she put her hand on my shoulder without saying a word. Huh? Until now, all she ever done was grab me or choke me, so I was surprised. I never expected this. And the words she said were different than usual, too. Kunisato was saying something nice to me. A psychic? Nanda. Oh, to me, a psychic? Yeah, wait. Uh, uh, yes, その... I was surprised that I said something I shouldn't have. Do you think that I'm going to ask you a question? リスナーだったんです。ふざけるな。情報操作の放送以外で、あんな発砲美人な人間を演じるのはごめんだ。とっとと行け。Right, fine. She pushed me away with with the hand she'd placed on my shoulder. I suddenly felt embarrassed. Why had I said that? I was so embarrassed that I tried to hurry into the car. Kunisato looked at me and said, Okay. I turned around. N I looked at her face one more time. Her features were elegant. And her beautiful almond-shaped uh, almond shaped eyes were always frozen cold. They never betrayed what she was really thinking. Her personality was as cool as ice, befitting a, a dedicated scientist who was always willing to do whatever it took to achieve her goal, regardless of the cost. But... Sometimes I caught a glimpse of something of some burning passion inside her. She really was a mysterious girl. Oh, right, there was one last thing I had to ask her. Since she might really be my last since this might really be my last chance. Nanda Shitonoka the distance between us had started to shrink, but it grew back with that one question. I felt the air around me freeze. I panicked. Sword! What? Did I say something funny? Just as I thought things between us would end with another series of cold insults from her, Kunusato started to laugh. She kept laughing in a low voice as I stood there with my mouth hanging open. All I could do was stand there and watch. I didn't know Kunusato could laugh like that. ホンモノと偽物の区別もつかないとはな。偽物。ワリアバフェイクワン。あれはただのレプリカだ。研究用のな。6年前の資料を取り寄せてアメリカの私の研究室が作った。ばらつきがある西ろ。リラックの海との
and then she left again. After that, after she was done laughing, she pushed me into the car. She pushed me into the way of a car. Okay. And before she closed the door. Ah, so da. Omae no dokyu se. Ito datta ka. Aitsu wa nanto ka tasukari so da so. Yippee. Wasurete ru yo da ga. Sore to hikikai ni. Omae wa watashi no jikken dai ni naru to chikatta. Sono yakusaku. Modotte kite. Chanto hatase yo. I'll try. Then she closed the door. I nodded from behind the window and mouthed the words, Thank you for everything. Everyone really was trying to make me feel better. Everyone really did want to see me again. But now I was going alone, down a path that m meant that might never happen. Shinju said mostly to himself from the driver's seat. The Shibuya intersection was overflowing with people. They were all looking at the footage of Memorial Park being displayed on the big TV screens. The time was 10.21 p.m. Seven minutes until the time when the earthquake began six years ago. When the time arrived, there would be a moment of silent prayer, and the festival would reach its final. Everyone at the festival seemed to be heading for the park, for the I I intersection in front of the station to participate. I could see a man who looked like a member of the city council on this on this screen. From the subtitles, he seemed to be giving a speech about the restoration project. <laughs> Shinjo had gotten his car just to to take us out of Shibuya. The windows were tinted, so. It didn't, uh, so I didn't have to worry about anyone seeing me. But there was no way to hide from anyone looking at me from the front. Just in case, I kept myself as far down in the space below uh, the seat as I could. We'd run into a lot of roadblocks once we'd entered this area, with the, the volunteer staff stopping us from going forward. Each time, Shinjo had to show his police notebook and explain that this was a police car and each time they'd let us through. But that meant that it was taking twice as long than usual. Shinjo said as he slowly waved the car through the crowd of people. I never would have made it to Hikariwa on my own. If it was too long, it would be more likely to meet Sakuma and Sakuma. So I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go. I could see Shinja's face in the rear view mirror. He'd put his finger up to the bridge of his nose, and his expression was pain. Hmm. No, they kind of do that all the time. Alright. Jo 
そんなに強い権力を持ってるんですか詳しいことはほとんど誰も知らないいや知ったものは闇に葬られてきた Irritated, Shinjo sw swerved the car around a group of pedestrians that were standing in the middle of the street. I ducked down so I couldn't be spotted from outside. Why did I read it like that? It, it was a little cramped. Hiruma it did a Shinjo san no senpai mo desu ka? I remembered him talking about that. About how this case was his way of avenging a detective he respected a lot. Shinjo ignored me and kept looking forward. I felt like his silence was a yes. Uh oh. Shinjo lowered the window, just a crack to hear what was going on outside. In front of us, by the side of the road, was a van advertising the Restoration Festival. A group of people had climbed on top of it. They must have been college aged and they were holding beers in their hands. Hearing them or even seeing them was upsetting. I leaned back into the seat, closed my eyes, and lowered my head again. Shinjo closed the window and started to drive away from all the commotion. I watched all the drunks pass by the other side of the tinted window. Or what people they're talking about are going through. Violence, murder, the darkness in the human heart. They think they understand these things because they read or hear about them, but they don't ever think about uh, about they must really like, huh? Did I forget to read some words? They think they understand these things because they read or hear about them, but they don't ever think about what they must really be like. The first time I met Shinjo was. Oh, he was right. Shinjo was the one in charge of the case, and that's how we'd met. これからおのえに会おうとして I had to know what Serika was really after, and the real re and the real reason she came into existence. What had I what what had I wanted during the earthquake? What wish had created her? I realized for the first time that I was trying to find out more about myself than Sarika. Who? I looked in the rear view mirror again. Shinjo was still watching the traffic in front of him. It doesn't look like it. It looks like he's looking at us. He's not looking at the road. Look at the road! Shirotosurukotonitaishitonyokunashidata. 
Shinju's voice took a strangely different character. His tone changed from one of nostalgia to one of sorrow. And then... Uh, uh, I almost dropped something. I was holding something and... Yeah. And then I dropped it. But I caught it. That was the answer to his silence before, too. Had he been killed by the committee? Let me think. Uh, I think it was by some cult guy. Guy, yeah. Senpai no sign of Oriwa Yokushiranai. Tada Senpai wa manzok da taro. Skunaktomo. Kokai wa stay nai hazda. I think. Let me think. I don't know, it's been a while since Chaos Head. Dakarato ite Senpai no shio mitomeru waki ni wa ikanai. Ore wa senpai ni oitske na katashi. Tomeru koto mo deki na katta. Ore wa kuyashinda. Kurusu nono san ga koko ni ireba. Kito onaji yo ni kanjiru hazda ya. Kimi no koto. I fell silent. There was nothing I could say. But I was truly glad he was the one who read Nono's letter. That he was the one who was helping me. When I reached a Hikariwo, he, 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 I realized that something was wrong. It was too quiet. Normally, even at this hour, the Hikariwo he, 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 would be fairly noisy, but it was completely silent. There were no murmurs, no drunken shouting like I'd heard just a moment ago. What is? I checked the time. What time is it? 1028! We made it here! Everyone had gathered in front of the memorial park or the TVs in front of the station for a, a silent prayer. Shinja switched the car's navigation system to TV mode. It was displaying footage of the memorial park. I saw the ceremony and gasped. All the sound was gone from Shibuya. It was like a movie set. Suddenly, I was struck by terror when... Uh, uh, terror even greater than before. It felt like the moment of silence was for me as I headed to my death. Just making it about yourself, huh? Just kidding. I forced myself to smile and tried to tell myself that I was shaking from excitement, not fear. My mind was confused, jumbled a, 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 a confused jumble of thoughts. Half of me wanted to go home, and half of me wanted me to stay, but I forced myself to keep going. That's right. I have to know, no matter what. <laughs> Shinjo tossed something at me. What is what is it? I felt the sensation of rubber as I grabbed it. He took the tire off the car and threw it at me. Just kidding. I tried to spread it out and stopped. What is it? Yeah. Arigatou I lowered my head in thanks. There were still people standing between me and the theater cube. He looked at his watch. I don't know. I wiped my sweaty hands off. My pants and nodded. 
Then I took a deep breath to calm myself down. I guess we're gonna find out what he threw at us. Unless they already said that, uh, then yeah, I, I've been paying attention, uh-huh. <laughs> I put on the Sinwa sticker a mask that Shinjo had given me and stepped out into a sh Shibia utterly without sound. The silent prayer was continuing, and this was my chance. Several people looked at me as I got out of the car, but they must have been used to seeing people in, in, in the masks. They quickly lost interest and lowered their heads once more. Everything was fine. They hadn't figured out who I was. Oh, was it the sumo sticker mask? I looked up. Wait, where did he get that? All right. Well, I, I looked up at the he he Kariwo building, which towered over me, like some kind of fortress. The people around me all seemed suspicious, but I made it. I made it to the theater floor without anyone saying anything. But then I realized that something was wrong and stopped. Mm. There was no one on this floor. There were no customers. Not even a single employee. Even the convenience store, which was open during the festival, was empty. <sighs> I took off the mask. My field of vision restored. I took another look around the floor. I was right. It was completely empty. There was no sign of Sarika or Dad either. The whole soundless space in front of me felt like a trap that I'd just walked into. Then I'd taken the mask off, but it still hurt to breathe. I tossed the mask into one of the decorative trees nearby and slowly started to walk across the floor. Every shadow scared me. Each time I reached a blind spot, I would stare at it. At it a moment before I proceeded. Where was the entrance to the theater? Huh. And there's like a big sign that says entrance and there's arrows pointing toward it. Where is that entrance? Alright. When I found the stairs and escalator, I felt a wave of nostalgia. This was where I'd come with the rest of Alba dorm. That's right, I'd gone up the stairs and into the theater. <laughs> I flinched as the escalator started to move. Escalators, escalators, escalators! I was... it, it was just a moment... A, mo a motion detector. I knew that. But... The machine seemed to be pulling me deeper into a trap. I looked up. I, I, I looked to the top of the escalator. There was no one there. I smacked my trembling legs with trembling hands, then slowly went up the stairs. This was the path that led to the theater where it was probably leading me to the final. That that either Dad or Serika had prepared for me. And I was probably doing exactly what one of them wanted. But I had to find Serika and the answer, and there was no way that desire was in anyone's script. It was my own, I thought. I had to find out the truth, for Nono's sake, as much as my own. I went to the entrance, to the theater, and put my hand on the heavy door. Wow, wow. <gasps> I felt a, a stabbing pain in my head the second I went inside. I staggered and leaned up against the back of a nearby chair. <laughs> Are 
I forced myself to endure the pain and look out and around the theater. The theater was done up in a modern style with a stadium seating. I'm gonna stretch. The stage was at the lowest point in the hall, and the seats got higher up the further you went went away, so it would be easier for the audience to see. The entrance was at the far back behind the seats when I looked down. I could see the whole room. The stage was completely empty. There were no props or backgrounds. The lights were focused on the stage, so the rest of the theater was dark and hard to see. The seat seemed empty, too. I couldn't see anyone. I couldn't hear any movement, either. My first subcon- uh, sub, 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 Suspicion was Dad's mind control power. But if his power worked like ours, that meant he would need to share his delusions with me in order to real boot them. In other words, what if I would- wh What? What if what I was seeing was due to mind control? Dad must be watching me from somewhere nearby. <laughs> I suddenly got an idea and looked through my pockets. Candy! I found the lollipop that Kazuki had given me. <laughs> I tossed it up and imagined it floating in the air, but... Instead of floating, it fell down into the row between the seats. Yes. No one's here. I sighed with relief, satisfied with what I'd seen. It was impossible for us to use our powers alone. For my psychokinesis, if my psychokinesis wasn't working, it meant there was no one here. But I still kept my guard up as I walked toward the stage. If I remembered right, this place hadn't changed since the last time I was here. Come to think of it, if I'd come here to celebrate my acceptance to, uh, acceptance to Hekio Academy, it had, it had only been two and a half years since I'd last been here. <laughs> It didn't seem real. It felt like so much more time had passed. Everything had changed. Nono and Yui were gone. Yuto had probably left his home and was on his way to Akihabara with Shinjo right now. And Dad... <coughs> Suddenly, I heard a sound behind me and spun around. Standing there was... She looked just like she had when I'd seen her this morning. Not only had she not hurt, uh, what what? Not only was she not hurt, there was no signs that she'd even, uh, even fought. Serika waited for the door. Uh, uh, for the door, she'd come through to close, and then slowly walked toward me. Her voice was quiet, but angry. She probably thought that I'd left Shibia. Tosan The look on my face must have been ridiculous. Serika's voice was completely calm, and it was hard to believe she was lying. Dad was dead? Her 
Her, her nod silently said, Of course I did. Of course. So Who else? Naze koko ni irunda? Kunosa to Mio tachi wa dou shita? How could she be so calm after killing someone? It was terrifying to see how unconcerned she was. My thoughts, feelings, and even the, my words were a jumbled, uh, were a jumbled mess, but I managed to tell her that Shinjo had taken them all out of Shibuya by now. And then I told her why I had come. お前どうして電話であんなこと言ったんだよ。Why <sighs> looked at me as if she was staring at something very dear to her. I knew this feeling. Serika was reading my mind. <sighs> Sword! Suddenly, it appeared. Its design was far too complicated and intricate to be called a sword. It was sharp like metal, but it had a strange luster that was all its own. It was a D-sword, big enough to cover Serika's entire upper body. It was what she used to kill Nono. Beyond her veil... Bl blade. Oh, oh my god. Behind her blade, I could see a sl slight change in her expression. It was the same look I'd seen before when she was talking about Dad, as if she hated everything she saw. <laughs> Just as she jumped, I felt a burning heart in my right shoulder. Oh, heat! Oh my god! I felt a burning heat in my right shoulder and fell to the ground. A moment later, I felt a pain like nothing I'd ever experienced before. I grabbed my shoulder with my left hand and felt something nasty. Warm and sticky. It was blood. I'd been cut! If I'd reacted even a moment later, she would have chopped my entire shoulder off. I looked up, Serika was already bringing her blade down. <gasps> I forced myself to twist out of the way, ignoring the blood spurting from my shoulder. This time, the pain in my l was in my left leg. I ignored it too, trying my best to get away. <laughs> Serika walked over to me slowly. It must, it must have bit something. I, I, oh my god, I must have bit something in my mouth when I rolled because I tasted something bitter and metallic. <laughs> Serika stopped close enough to strike me with her D sword and began to speak. お前を生かし続けることはできない。お前を。no way! 
that's why she was going to kill me? Just like she killed Nono with the with that D sword. <sighs> the pain from the cuts kept me from thinking thinking and the blood loss drained away my will to resist. I could feel my left I couldn't feel my left leg anymore, but I couldn't stop looking at Serika. I wasn't sure where there was any important blood vessels around the calves. Whoa. Serika swung the D sword at me. <laughs> And then I felt something burst within me. <laughs> I left at Serika. I reached out my hand without thinking and felt something warm and rough. I heard her scream in my ears. Huh? By the time I realized, I reached into the cut on her stomach and ripped out the stitches. It was already on top. Uh, I was already on top of her. Her D sort of disappeared. My hand went for her neck. <laughs> My fingers dug into her flesh. The only thing I saw was the red color dripping down the base of her neck. It was my blood from when she'd cut my- uh, Was it my blood from when she cut my shoulder? Or hers when I ripped open her stomach? Or had my nails broken the skin on her neck? Whatever it was, it was red, and it was spreading. I couldn't stop myself from gripping tighter. My fingers dug deeper and deeper, and the soft sensation of her skin began to recede. Instead, I felt thick muscle and hard bone. Ah! Alright. When it was all over, the pain in my leg and shoulder was gone. No, it was still there, but I, I didn't feel... It, it didn't feel like my own pain. It was like I was watching myself on top of Serika from a distance. But when I took my hand off her neck, that feeling disappeared and everything else came flooding back. Serika's eyes had rolled up into her head, and her tongue was sticking out of her mouth. I felt an unpleasant w wetness I in my underwear. It was her blood from from where I uh, where I had sat on her. The blood was pouring out from the gash in her stomach. <laughs> Serika wasn't moving anymore. Uh, did I kill her? Uh, did... I suddenly felt the urge to vomit. Why? What was I doing? Uh, uh, what was I doing on top of Serika? Why were my hands covered in blood? <laughs> my head hurt. My field of vision was red. My heart was pouring. My, my heart was pouring. Pa pounding! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it pours. That's what a heart. No, it pounds. Okay. And my heart was pounding hard, and under me was the body of that girl I had created. Uh. 
I cradled my head in 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 my bloody hands. It hurt so much. It felt like I was going to burst. My ears hurt too. Everything was turning red. <laughs> Suddenly, my vision cleared. The lights above the stage seemed impossibly bright, like the sun at the end of a tunnel. <laughs> there was a pain in my eyes. I reached up my hand, and my fingers were covered in pink tears. And then I realized... Serika wasn't here. My fingers weren't covered with blood. I twisted my neck to look at my shoulder. My clothes weren't even cut. And there wasn't a single wound on my leg either. <laughs> what was going on? I was sitting on the ground alone by the seats near the entrance. <laughs> I leaped up to my feet. That's a big theater. Imagine the the plays and musicals you could do up there. Dad was up on the stage. He was standing in the center, like the lead singer at a musical. And at his feet. What's there? What is it? Serka, the girl I thought I'd just killed, was lying at her at his feet. There was no blood on her clothes, and the cut on her stomach hadn't been torn open. But she must have been unconscious because she wasn't moving. She's sleeping. <laughs> I suddenly understood what was going on. Mind control. But when? <laughs> then I came inside. I felt a sharp pain in my vision, and a vision, and my vision had blurred for a moment. When I tested my powers with the lollipop, was I already under a spell? The pain and heat had felt so real, but it was all an illusion. But all I, but, but I could still feel the sensation of uh, wringing Serika's neck. Dad tapped his own heart. Hearing Dad talk in the same tone he always did was almost enough to get me to let my guard down. But this wasn't the man I knew. The man on the stage wasn't the dad I knew. Some other guy. I took a good look at it. Dad was holding some kind of backpack. And I could see some kind of device inside it. Dad was wearing a piece of headgear that connect that, that connected to it. And the long cylindrical machine he was holding was connected to it by a cord. If he had psychic powers like we did, then he would have to have one too. 
A sword. That was Dad's D sword. But why did he have it? I thought that those powers only appeared in brains that were still developing during the earthquake. これまでの研究によれば、脳がまだ発達段階で活発に活動している若い人間。その中でも、脳への負荷が非常に高い事象を経験した者だけに能力の発言が見られる。That's what Kunisato had said. Ah,これが。Dad saw what I was looking at and tapped his backpack with the D sword. すげえだろ。俺たちの研究成果の一つさ。俺みたいな普通の人間でもギガロマニアックスと似たような能力が持てる。こいつはある装置の端末でな。その装置ってのは以前ここにあったんだが、ちょっとトラブっちまって。おか
ゆいだってずっとあんたを信頼してたそれに No, no. きっかけはタクルのリハビリの手伝いをしていた時に父さんに言われた言葉独学なのにやるじゃないかなかなかだぞという一言でしたきっと父親というのはそういうものなんでしょう父さんが作った家のルール私は好きでしたありがとうくれぐれも飲みすぎには注意してくださいしんじてたんだ大切な家族だってなのに何考えてたよ My words echoed up the walls of the theater and came back to me again and again. And then I realized that I was the same way. I believed in Dad too, from the bottom of my heart. But he. Dad chuckled and scratched his head like I'd seen him do many times before. It was the same thing he'd done when Nona was scolding him at home. タクルよ。お前なんか楽しいことってあるかはあなんかあんだろう面白いと思うこと。それがなきゃ。人間なんてやってらんねえだろうが。What was he talking about? That wasn't what I'd asked. なんでゆいを殺した? ノノを殺したんユイユイやったのはお前の友達だしノノをやったのはこいつだろうがようるさいどうこい。What the hell was so funny? I clenched my hands into a fist. My grip was so tight in my rage that my nails dug into my skin. あんたどうしてどうしてこんなことできるんだおかしいだろう何起こるなって今言ったろ楽しまなきゃダメだ。What the hell does that mean, though?俺はな、お前に期待してたんだよ。人間一人リアルブートしちまうくらいぶっ壊れてたからな。どこまで行けるかどこまで震えるか楽しみにしてたああお前みてえなギガロマニアックスが好きなことを好きなだけやるようになったら本当にすげえんだぜこの世界すらめちゃくちゃにできちまう面白えたまんねそれを観測して計算
No, I can't. <laughs> that was the only reason? The only reason he worked for the committee? The only reason he... He'd done those horrible experiments in the basement. Yuya <laughs> The next thing I knew, I was running. The G-Sword appeared in my hand instantly. It had no weight, but I could feel it was there. I listened to the blades roar as I ran down the corridor. Wait, how far away were they? And I swung it upward at the Bastard on the stage. <laughs> there was a high pitched noise and a, a br brilliant light, and I stopped. My hand went numb for a second. The medical. The, the the mechanical D sword had blocked my swing. <laughs> oh, here comes my cat. Dad's muscles bulged in like thick ropes as he swung his giant D sword down at me. Bling. <laughs> I barely managed to block it, but the impact knocked me back into the f into the front row seats. There was a sharp pain in my arm, and I'd been cut a little. It was a de it was a delusion before, but this time real blood was running down my arm. Oi, oi! Omae no wanryoku de ore to chanbara suru ki ka? Dad didn't move a step. He raised the giant sword onto his shoulder. His huge body was at least 185 centimeters tall, and he towered over me from the stage like a wall. Ma, <laughs> Then he kicked Serika's unmoving body once more. I felt anger, but also an indescribable despair. What was I doing here? I'd come to find out the truth from Serika. I had killed her myself. There was no reason for me to be here anymore. So, did that mean there was no reason to try and fight Dad? No, it, it wouldn't even be a fight. I'd probably just get myself killed. So maybe... When Serika had cut open my leg before, it only been an illusion. I could run to the exit if I if I cut him off guard I could escape maybe but but oh uh I went forward I hadn't done any real exercise since my physical therapy six years ago. 
A vision of Nono and Yui flashed through my mind. For some reason, I saw Serika smiling, like she used to do when we were in the newspaper club. <laughs> when I looked at him, I suddenly had an idea in the corner of my mind. I remembered what he'd said. That the machine on his back was what gave him his power. That he was an artificial gigglomaniac. Then, well, what if I could get rid of that machine? I stood and climbed up on the stage. The light shone down upon my head. I could hear a non-existent crowd screaming for my death from the empty seats. I re... re... re-died? Re-died? Readied! Readied! Oh my god! I readied my D-sword. My hand still felt like a, a little numb. Oh, I took a step to the side, trying to look as natural as possible. By moving to the side, I was able to see part of the device on his back. What part? I hit him with my power as hard as I could. Dad heard a noise behind him and turned around. I had a clear view of the machine. I concentrated harder and hit him with more of my power. Dad howled like a wild animal and swung his D-sword. But I didn't stop. As long as I can destroy that machine. Ah! Whoa. Where am I? My vision suddenly blurred. I felt a cold wind on my cheek and I could see the city in the distance. Where was I? <laughs> More mind control? I panicked and tried to use my D-sword. It was gone. The D-sword had disappeared. <laughs> The concent I concentrated as best I could. I imagined the pale light of the sword. Come on! Come on! I couldn't see him or sense him. But Dad was probably right in front of me with his huge D-sword. But I couldn't make my D-sword appear. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't see it. I couldn't find it. It was always supposed to appear when I imagined it. <gasps> Serika was standing there on the roof. And so was... <laughs> was no no. Nono was standing in front of me, talking. No. Nono no is... Nono is... My sense of logic dispelled the hope that was forming in my mind. This was mind control. Dad's power was causing me to hallucinate. 
The two of them were right in front of me, but didn't seem to know I was there. <laughs> Suddenly, Serika changed. The smiling, happy girl from the newspaper club disappeared. She became a cold, re remorseless killer. I knew I was being mind controlled, but couldn't help myself. I felt a cold chill in my heart, and all the hairs on my body stood on end. Seika's D sword appeared in in her hand. No, 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 no! It didn't seem surprised. She just glared at Serika. Stop it! Stop it, Serika! それが私の存在理由だ。信じられないわ。だから私はあなたを止める。この命を使ってでも。そう言うと思った。だからお前は邪魔なんだ。やめろ。I screamed at Serika as Serika stepped forward, but there was no sign that she heard me. I tried to summon my D sword, but it didn't work. I tried to get between the two of them. And I realized I couldn't move. My legs felt like they were frozen to the ground. But my head was clear. I couldn't let this happen. I knew I had to stop it, but. Ah! Serika and Nona's D sword slam into each other. There was a flash so bright I was forced to close my eyes. And Nona's D sword cracked. Serika kept going forward. There was no hesitation on her face. No matter how much I screamed, they didn't hear me. I couldn't move. Serika crossed right in front of me, carrying her gigantic deadly weapon. <laughs> disappeared in the next moment are we redoing what happened what we saw before it felt like Nona looked at me and then Serika's D sword ran through her And suddenly, I was seeing something else. I felt a cold wind on my cheek, and I could see the city in the distance. I could hear a sob. I'd been crying without realizing it. I looked around, forgetting even to wipe my tears from my cheeks. The roof was lit up by the moon. There was nothing here. There was no one here. Of course... There was no sign of Serika or Nono's body. Then, what was that? <laughs> it 
It was all mind control. All just a hallucination. It was a fake vision that my dad had created. That's right. It was just like a movie. It, it had to be. Nona died at Serika's hand. Serika had killed Nono. That had really happened. I'd seen it. But it wasn't happening now. It was all part of the past. There was no changing. Again, the two of them were standing there, just as they were before. So, is he gonna play this over and over? I might, <laughs> I might skip over some of the stuff that's repeated. I know what they're trying to do, and um, oh, oops, I remembered how I felt to hold Nono's body in my hands, the smell of her blood, and the warmth drained from her body. And the way her eyes would never look at me again. Calm down. I tried to tell myself that again and again. That was part of the past. Screaming wouldn't change it. <laughs> Maybe this wasn't even part of the past. I hadn't heard this conversation. Everything except the fact that Serika had killed Nono might be a hallucination that my dad had created. <laughs> I tried to run away, growing ever more frustrated at my unmoving legs. But nothing worked. That's right. The real me wasn't even here. I was on top of the stage, trapped in a hallucination with Dad on his- uh, uh, I was on top of the stage, trapped in a hallucination with Dad and his gigantic D-sword standing right in front of me. <laughs> Serika raised her D-sword and advanced. <laughs> It was coming back. I never wanted to go through that again, but it was coming back. I looked away. No, I tried to look away, but my head wouldn't move. I, I couldn't m take my eyes off of it. Nono looked at me. Yeah, what am I doing here? What? <laughs> Sirika killed Nono again. Ah, doing this again, huh? And then I found myself at the beginning once more. On the cold, moonlit roof. I wrapped my arms around my body tightly, trying to warm myself against the freezing air. What was that? Nono had looked at me. I'd seen her looking at me. I was unsure of it. She'd seen me. No, that was impossible. I really wasn't here. <laughs> that was Nono's voice I heard. And she'd been looking at me. If I was a real gigalomaniac, did that mean I had the power to change the past? If that was true, was that the real Kurusu? 
Not a hallucination. My head hurt, and I was losing the ability to think. No, this was... This was an illusion. It was an illusion. There was no way I could change the past. Ah, this series is confusing. Yeah, it is. It is a bit. <laughs> and we're on the last... We're on the last chapter. I don't know how far we have to go, but... Yeah. Well, hello. How's it going? Also, how how's it going? How's it? How how's the how's the day? <laughs> yeah. The day is good. How is the stream? I think it's going good. Yeah. I don't... I don't think it's bad, at the very least. And that's good that your day is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On my third time seeing the exact same thing, I finally closed my eyes. Stop it! I don't want to see No No Die anymore. I put my hands over my ears to black out the sound, but I could hear them speaking the same words. The last conversation Nona would ever have followed directly into my head. No YouTube stream? No. Uh, I'm, I'm just on... For now, I'm just on Twitch. For now. Just like... It's a long story, but yeah. I put the VODs up on there, though. Mikomichigai <laughs> I didn't have to look to know what was happening. I knew the expressions on their faces. I knew the looks in their eyes. The angle that Serika held the G-sword at. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let me get some water. <laughs> glad I had followed you on both or I would have missed the stream. Yeah, I'm glad too. Glad you could make it here. I hope. I hope you enjoy the stream. The angle that Serika held her G-sword and at, and even how she was going to swing it. I knew it all. I felt warm blood splash on my face the second I closed my eyes. And there was no time even to scream. <laughs> I kept my eyes closed tight. But I could feel the wind on my cheeks again. I was stuck, frozen on the floor again. The muscles in my face had tensed up. There was nothing funny happening, but I was letting out a noise that sounded like laughter. My teeth were chattering. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I covered my ears, but their words were went right into my brain. I didn't know how I could possibly be any more confused. What was that? Why was Nono in front of me? Yeah. 
やめてくれ。I didn't want to open my eyes. I wanted to keep them shut. But for some reason, the moment, mo mo the moment Nono was killed, they opened on their own. Nono kept dying in front of me. Nono had taken care of me and kept me safe before I'd even woken up from my coma. From my, from my perspective, that was before I'd even known her. She was a part of my family. She was the only big sister I had. And she kept dying over and over. My head hurt, but the pain didn't even work as an anchor to keep my mind connected to reality. This no no was a hallucination. I knew that. But the words she said were repeat, ripping apart my mind. Nona looked at me and kept asking, Were those her last words before she was killed? Her, her dying screams, her final message? No more. I didn't want to see her die anymore. Please stop it. My eyes were closed, but I could hear her death repeat again and again in my mind. The D sword running through her chest. The blood everywhere, the tiny sound coming from her throat, like air leaking from a bag. Her body was hot when it landed on my face. Oh, her blood! Oh my god. It didn't have a, me a, a metallic smell, but it was hot. I couldn't tell anymore. Was this really a hallucination? Maybe this was the real no-no. And maybe... This is what she really thought. Why didn't you save me? Why didn't you save Yui? Why did you try to solve the case at all? I told you not to do anything dangerous. I told you not to get revenge. Yo, there was a uh, all cap scream. <laughs> I heard a sound somewhere. It was the sound of something snapping. I didn't want to see anymore. I didn't want to hear anymore. I didn't want to feel anymore. I closed my mind. I closed off my mind. Nothing, uh, wanting nothing more than that. Oi, oi. So I heard a voice from somewhere speaking directly into my head, but I held my hands on my ears anyway. I didn't want to hear anything. And then, like in computer monitor being powered off, everything disappeared. What? What was this? It was dark. I couldn't see anything. I was in a huge, dark, empty space, like nothing I'd ever experienced. I couldn't even tell if my eyes were open or not. I, I tried blinking, but the darkness didn't change. I tried to rub my eyes to see if that ha helped, but my hands wouldn't move. No, not just my hands. Uh, nothing moved. Huh? There was no sensation of standing. There was no feeling of weight on my bo in my body. Was I lying down? No. Was I floating? It was like 
being in a zero grav being in zero gravity or floating in water with no resistance. Like my body was drifting along. The only thing that existed was the quiet. I could hear the sound of my heart echoing. But even in the overwhelming darkness, I felt a little better. Anything was better than seeing Nono die again and again. It didn't matter what. Compared to hearing Nono's last words over and over, I did nothing but float there. It was like being almost asleep, but there was something stopping me from falling asleep altogether. It felt weird and unpleasant. I tried to at least do something about the floating, but there was nothing to grab, uh, grab onto, nowhere to stand, and nobody would, uh, and yeah, and my body wouldn't move. I wanted something solid. I tried my best to find it. Suddenly, I realized, where was I? What was I doing here? No, no. This was more mind control. This darkness was another hallucination. <laughs> yep. That's how. <laughs> I tried to scream and wave my arms, but there was no sound and no movement. If I couldn't move, I at least wanted to feel something with one of my senses. It could be a bright light screaming, even pain. An awful bitter taste, or even a horrible smell. If I didn't find something fast, I'd lose track of where I, I ended and the darkness began. I know. What about my shoulder injury from when my dad knocked me into the seats? I desperately tried to feel the pain in my shoulder, but it didn't work. I couldn't feel anything, even whether or not it, it, whether or not it was bleeding. It felt like the darkness was gradually be, 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 burying, burying, was gradually burying me, like ants swarming on a piece of candy. The boundary line between my own body and the rest of the world got even bl got even blurrier. No way. I finally remembered a certain piece of information. I remembered what my dad said just before this happened. Wood burn. Heron, what is it? I matched the name with what was going on. That was a famous experiment, if I remember right. Heron's sensory depra de de deprivation experiment. He would put subjects in a sound-treated room that was completely silent, then blindfold them so they couldn't see, then tie them up with a straitjacket. He kept them at exactly their body temperature to take away their sense of touch. Except for eating, e eating simple meals and de 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 be de 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 defecting, defecting, defecating. Oh my God, they were kept on bed at all times. The experiment he'd done was to see how long they could last. The result had been far less than what he'd expected. The most any of them could endure was two or three days. Two, two, three! <laughs> the worst ones would complain of disturbed thinking after only a few hours. If they continued with the experiment, experiment anyway, they would start hearing and seeing things. And almost go mad. A human being can't endure long periods of time with no stress or stimulation. The experiment was banned now because of its dangerousness. I remembered something else, something terrifying. 
What had my dad said? See you in a month. I was supposed to spend a month like this? I screamed. But I couldn't hear my voice. The first change was to my sense of vision. It was after about two days had passed by my reckoning. It would have been about dinner time. I wasn't sleepy or hungry. At some point, I just began to count numbers. One second, two seconds. It was meaningless, but I felt like I'd go mad if I didn't do something. When I just passed 100,000 seconds, the darkness in front of me suddenly began to shine. W what was there? It wasn't a camera flash or a light bulb. It was just a blurry glow. That was all. I couldn't see anything else or even move. When I saw it, I lost track of the number and started over. The light came every 100,000 seconds. A day was 60 times 60 times 24, so 86 400 seconds. Perfect. I decided to go to I decided to round up and call each 100,000 seconds a day. When there was no light, I was bored. I wish so many times for something to happen. Someone come here. Even Dad, I didn't care. I'd rather be fighting a battle with the D sword that I knew I couldn't win. No, actually, I'd rather be stabbed with a D sword. I wanted to feel pain. I thought that when the light came for the 30th time, I could escape. Because that would mean a month had passed. A month was 30 days. But nothing happened. The light just kept coming at the same pace as before. When the light came after the 30 days passed, I stopped counting how many times I, it had come. I stopped counting to 100,000 too. <laughs> What's the point of continuing it anyway? <laughs> No, no? I heard that clearly. I'd started hearing voices sometimes when I neared the 30th appearance of the light. Are you just going to die like this? What's Mayashita Park like? Hey, Mayashita, how do you... Uh, how do you know Gen? Adi... Uh, adios? Gracias? I don't think I said that right. Why did you... Why did you leave me to die? You idiot! Are you trying to die here? The newspaper club's just getting started, right? Tell me. Why did you save me? It hurt so much when I died. You ever heard of Woodburn Heron? The voices came and disappeared without listening... Uh, without listening to my responses. I, at least, wanted to see their faces. I was already starting to forget what everyone looked like. Maybe if I saw them again, I could stop the darkness from swallowing up all my memories. Really? Really? You'll do that for me? Wait. No. Um. That, that's not true. Of course I'm not lonely. No, I I wanted to tell you to be careful. Dad's power is... What is it again? 
どうした佐久間はどこにいるんだよそれがわかんねえと殺しに行けねえだろさっさと言え時間の無駄だはあ<笑> That's strange. He should be right there.、Um, there. Where's there? <laughs> Don't you know? I'm a right sider? Of course I know. He's the guy who came up with the theory. Uh, that that day is 86400 seconds. Huh. Amazing, right? I was slowly breaking and melting away. Suddenly, I felt something stabbing me somewhere. It was the pain I'd been longing for, but I didn't care anymore. I was just tired of it. No, please don't stab me. I don't want to die. Why not? Because it hurts! Nono kept stabbing me as if she was trying to find out where I was. When that sound finally stopped, I heard a wet, slopping noise. I could tell her, her hands were jammed inside my body, rummaging through my guts. I could imagine the blood. But Nono was right. I didn't feel any pain. That's strange. I heard a moment ago. No, no. Let me see you. I'm sorry. You can kill me if you want. Because I want to see you. I want to see anybody. I'm lonely. No, no. No, no. Why? Why did you leave? No. Wait. Was that really no, no? Was that. Nono's voice? Did she really talk like that? Mmm. Wait a second. What was Nono's last name? That orphanage. I was blinking out on the place's name. There were two sisters there. What were their names? Or. Wait, was it a brother and sister? Everything was turning black. Who was that girl who always told me not to lie? Who was the one in the white lab coat? The one who didn't talk? The one who always seemed scared? Who'd been stabbing me a moment ago? I don't. Shut up! Shut up! Suddenly the noises started to bother me. I didn't want to, to be criticized by the people when I didn't even know their names. Please, somebody. Somebody kill. Ow! I was surprised by the sudden fierce pain in my head. Thud, thud. I felt the blood flowing from, into my head. How many months had it been since I felt pain so clearly like this? No, how many years or, or, or maybe decades? I said shut up! All of you, shut up! I screamed back at the voices. I don't know who you people are. All of you just disappear! <laughs> When I said someone's name, everything became better. All the voices disappeared and the pain in my head was gone. 
く大丈夫怪我はうん平気だね She was right next to me. As if that was the most natural place in the world for her to be. Oh, that was impossible. Well, my dad uses mind control on me, I killed her. So, I remembered. Dad had used his mind control on me. In the theater cube at the at, at the he 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 carry he, he carry I'm still not sure if I'm saying that right. So this was all just The entire game it was all a dream. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Serika laughed. I didn't know why. で、どう? <laughs> Serika looked around into the empty void. She was acting like she'd just come over to check out a friend's new house. お前な、一度こうなってみろよ。体を動かせないのがどんなに辛いか。うう、そりゃ、私は耐えられそうにないけど、タクはリハビリの時に経験済みじゃん。あの時は動かそうとするたびにちゃんと痛みが走った。動いてなくても動かしてるっていう実感があったんだよ。うーん、そういうもの。セリケ I didn't even have the slightest idea how much time had passed, but it had been much longer than a day or two. The restoration festival is probably long since over, and I might even I might have starved to death. それはないんじゃないかな。だってタク、ちゃんと話してるし、生きてるってことでしょ。そうだけど。情報をまとめて理屈で考えろっていつも言ってるのはタクだよ。こっちと向こうの時間が違うとか。That's right. That's possible. Hina-chan. Oh, right. Hina. Hina Arimura. How had I forgotten about her? Shinjo-san was with her together. I thought she was going to get to the house. Who is that? Who is that? Uki-chan and Yuto-kun? あれれ、花ちゃんは？あいつは事件と直接関係ないから渋谷に残ってると思う。そっか。And then Serika started asking me one question after another. Could I really not move? Was the light I sometimes saw hallucination? Were the voices I hear imaginary? I took a long time answering each one as uh, in as much detail as possible. I had plenty of time after all, and just the act of having conversation was wonderful. 
It was something I'd done all the time in my daily life, and at the newspaper club. Come to think of it, who had the fur? Who, who had first used the phrase, "You don't know what you've got till it's gone," and when did they use it? I laughed a little, though I wasn't sure if Serika was serious or joking. Each time I would answer one of the questions, Serika's expression would change. She'd laugh or get mad, and sometimes she'd even try to correct me. She really did seem like a normal person, but... Hmm? She acted like a kid who'd been caught while playing hide and seek. Oh, she's not real. If she wasn't real, I must have spent all my time as a kid talking to empty air. でもさ、私とタクが一緒にいるところなんてそんなに見られてないよ。タクの両親くらいじゃない。あと病院の地下でセンリちゃんにか、あれは失敗したな。そのせいで私のんちゃんにバレちゃったんだよね。うん。That's right. Serika and I spent m m almost all of our time in my room. I'd never been to her house. No, according to Kunisato, her house didn't exist. I laughed, but she seemed a little bothered. I remembered carrying a Seri carrying Serika through the hell that was post earthquake Shibia. But if she'd only just been born when I had that headache when I was in the in the Yoyogi shelter, I hadn't really been carrying her on my back at all. Only then did I remember why I was here. It wasn't to talk about old times. うん。よくわかんないけど、でもちょっと変くらいにしか見えてなかったと思うよ。ほら、私は気を失ってたからあんまり話してないし。あんな状況じゃタクが独り言を言ってるとか歩いてる姿勢がおかしいとか。If I could have moved my body, I would have been looking straight into Serika's eyes. She didn't seem surprised or upset at all. Yeah, that's right. The Serika in front of me might look alive, but she's really just a delusion of mine. So she wouldn't know anything that I didn't. I created her again to help me get through this torture. She was just... Oh. <laughs> Ooh? And when I realized it, I was disgusted with myself. I felt so pathetic that I wanted to cry. How could I be so shameless? Even if it was a trap created by Dad's mind control, I still kill her with my own hands. She'd almost killed me, and then I'd lost control and killed her instead. 
I tore open her stomach injury and then strangled her. Saying I'd been mind-controlled was just an excuse. The rage and desire to kill her I felt had been real. Even without the mind control, if the same thing happened in reality, I'd, I'd do it again. I'd kill her. Even when the imaginary me tried to kill her, she'd chosen to die rather than resist, unlike me. But... But... Then... I'd wish for her again. Just like I'd done during the Shibuya earthquake. And... I'd... Come to... Come to her for help again. I couldn't handle the darkness on my own, so I... I created her. I could not imagine a worse person than myself. Enough! Stop it! Don't tell me exactly what I want to hear! Come to think of it, Sarek had always been like that ever since I was little. Even when I was neglected, she was always jealous of me. She always made me think that I was better off than she was. Whenever I wanted to show off some new piece of information I'd learned, she'd always act interested. She'd pretended to be a stupid girl so that I'd always get to think get 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 to think of myself as a right side. <laughs> Serika looked hurt when she saw my uh, saw me apologize. Why don't you understand? You don't have to apologize. This is what makes me happy, she seemed to say. But she only looked that way because I wanted her to. My ego and desire had created the role of a kind-hearted young girl that she was forever forced to play. The two of us were like that for a little while. I kept apologizing to Serika and seemed to, to not want her... Uh, I, I kept apologizing, and Serika seemed to not want to hear it. Eventually, she spoke to me with a... Like a mother, scolding her child. ね。それでも私を許しちゃいけないんだよ。私、ノンちゃんを殺しちゃったんだから。そうでしょ。でも、その理由が奥のせいかもしれないんだ。no, it wasn't a maybe. There had to be something. Something connected with me. Serika's <laughs> right. No, I was forcing her to be right. Of course I knew what she would say next. Serika's voice became a light. The the one thing that lit up my path in the dark world. Something. Ah, here we go. Suddenly, I saw a scene I remembered well. Until a moment ago, the blackness had kept me from remembering no matter how hard I tried to imagine them. But now, I could see my family. They must have been getting ready for dinner. I smelled something good. I looked in the kitchen and saw a line, a, a, a line up of dishes for, a fit for a nursing home. Yui Uki, if you take cooking classes from Nono, they're going to start calling you mom or granny at school. Yuto was in the corner, sulking because Yui had made fun of him. 
Yui was looking at him and laughing, Uki didn't know what to do. Nana gave Yui a brief scolding, but then... But, but she was smiling while she did it. It was the same thing I'd seen a million times before. Nothing was different. Everyone was in the club room, going over the case. We seem to be talking about Shibuya news. Kunisato had updated some information. Kazuki was playing her game. Ito went to stop her, but froze when she offered him a piece of dried squid. Ayamura told a stupid joke, and Ito blushed and started to shake his head frantically. There was still no expression on Kazuki's face. This was another scene I knew well, but this world was never coming back. My dad had destroyed it. So that it? You know? Of course not! I loved my family. I loved my friends. Those places were the most precious things I had. He'd ruined them all. And when I'd asked him why, the only reason he could give me was that it was fun. I couldn't let him get away with that. No matter what I did, Yui and Nono weren't coming back. The life I, I, I'd had with my friends was gone. My feelings began to break free from the darkness and come to life again. Blood flowed through my body once more, and my senses started to return to me. That's right, I... Even if that means breaking my promise to Nono. I didn't care what my dad was trying to accomplish with this experiment or what was happening to me. He wanted something from me? What was it? I didn't even want to know. He... I didn't care. I refused to go crazy like he wanted. なんか... <laughs> <laughs> I smiled back at her, and then I focused all my neurons in, on creating a delusion. Where had I been? What was I so angry at, and where were they standing? If I was in a prison of delusion created by a machine, then I'd have to come up with a delusion that was even more powerful. And then, I'd pull him into my own delusion. The way I remembered it, it was like this. Were they? Closer, huh? How about this? Okay. Sarika walked around the stage, checking to see if there was anything I'd missed. She must have been satisfied because she nodded several times. Serika pretended to be impressed with what I said. I laughed at myself too. Was I really the type of person who was brave enough to do something like this? I used to think that risky delusions weren't courageous, but stupid. 
I used to think that courage was just a word people used to hide their stupidity. Oh, that's right. Why not? That's well, if you insist, I'm sorry, and thanks. There were- those were the only words I could come up with. I didn't know what else I could say. Hora, Taku! Chanto stay yo! Janaito! <laughs> Serika pouted a little. It was the same thing she used to do at the newspaper club. I tried to stop my tears from welling up again. ちゃんとしてるよ。この僕がちゃんとしてなかったことなんてあるか? <laughs> She laughed, and then she looked right in my eyes. That's right. I would only have a few seconds in the world of my delusion. In a few seconds when I got back to reality, I'd probably have less than five seconds in total. If he'd been researching psychics for as long as he said, he'd notice what I'd done immediately. So I'd only get one shot. If it didn't work, he'd kill me. Uh, he'd kill me this time. Serika looked relieved when she saw my resolve. Then she smiled and started to fade away as if her job was done. At the same time, I felt a stabbing pain in my head. It was the pain from when the D-sword appeared. Here it comes. ネボナことにかける覚悟はオッケーオッケー。賭け金が自分の命だっていう現実はオッケー。オッケー。バカな決断に言い訳をしない意思はオッケー。オッケー。わ。じゃあ行って。舞台に上がって。立つ。All caps, scream! I slammed my own delusion down on top of that one that held me. I don't know if I can play this, if this music can play. I'm gonna turn it down just a, just a little, just in case. I don't know if that'll help, but... It was like splattering brightness on paint, a bright, splattering bright paint on a black canvas in a single instant a perfect replica of the theater appeared. Yes, it was working. Dad was in front of me, he looked surprised. I could tell from the shock in his face that he hadn't yet realized. That, that this was a world of delusion sitting atop another delusion and that I'd dragged him inside. Uh, what ice cream? <laughs> there must be ice cream, because we all scream. The, the machine on his back started to creak and moan. Its shape was be, be, becoming wrapped and distorted as if it was being crushed by an in in invisible giant. 
I screamed louder as I tried to use my power to destroy it. Dad stopped at the uh, as if to protect it. The look on his face making it clear that he still couldn't believe what was happening. But it was too late. Crush it. Crush! Here. Okay, now I'll, I'll turn it back up to where it was. I hit him with a stronger delusion. The outer frame could, couldn't take the stress and the machine started to break. Dad panicked and raised his D-sword to use his mind control on me again. A red light flashed in front of me. But it wasn't mind control again. It was the opposite. This was the key for the for for the plan that the other Serika and I had come up with. Dad, Su 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 Sakama had made a mistake. He thought I'd escape from his mind control on my own. He thought I'd escape from that delusion and made it back to reality. So he did just what we hoped he would, and ended the mind control that was on me now. Even though I was still inside that dark prison, if Dad had stayed calm, he would have noticed that his mistake immediately. But it was also sudden he'd panicked and made the wrong decision. That black torture chamber was gone. And in an instant, I cancelled my own delusion. The bonds that tied me to in that place were gone. My senses came back and told me that this was reality. The pain of my injury, the smell of blood, the taste of blood, the feeling of the D-sword in my hand. Dad howling as he stood there with his fake sword raised high. But just getting back to reality wasn't good enough. I only had a few seconds, probably. I needed to destroy the reality before he figured out the trick. Run. I forced my aching body to move and ran as, uh, at full speed towards my foe. I lowered my body as if, uh, as I ran with and held my D sword ready. A new attempt at mind control came at me. I could feel it try to scramble my brain. But it wasn't stopping. I couldn't stop. I bit down hard on my lip and used the pain to check my five senses. You're still okay. Don't stop running. Keep running. We ran right into him. I swung the sword down at my father. <coughs> Dad tried to dodge it. But that was just what I wanted. He ducked low, and I could clearly see the device on his back. I slammed the D-sword down into it hard before he could move. Oh. Panting, I pulled the D-sword out of the device. Parts flew everywhere. The strange light it had been giving off disappeared, and the artificial D-sword he was holding lost its shine. The pain created by his mind attempts vanished like it was never there. 
as soon as as soon as saw that the device was destroyed i fell onto my knees i used my power while running at full speed and it hurt to breathe i was dizzy from lack of oxygen Timmy. Dad's mood suddenly began to change. He seemed to realize what I'd just done. The smile on his face vanished, and instead of anger, there was no expression at all. I'd never heard him use that tone, uh, a tone like that before. <laughs> なんだよ。なんで壊れてねえんだ。なんで生きてる。いや、なんで精神を保ってる。てめえがあれに耐えられるわけねえんだ。俺は確かに30日間お前を。Was it 30 days or did he... <laughs> I used the G-Sword as a support to help me to my feet. It was fine. I could move. I could move just the way I wanted to. I was sure of it. I'd made it back to reality. Oi, Kotaro! Why are you I readied the D sword again without saying a word. There was no, th there was still no expression on Dad's face. So, so you kotoka. I looked down. Serika was lying there, looking like she was asleep, even though she was dead. Dad's anger vanished, and instead of starting to speak like a scientist observing a, a guinea pig that was even creepier somehow imaginary friend da kede nori kitta ってのか koroshita aite ni sugari tsukute wa omowanagatta tagu omoshiroku nei koto shiyagatte dad raised the now dull d sword King toward me. It was no longer an artificial D sword. It was just a regular sword. But it was still a giant blade. Metal blade. Even without his powers, it was more more than capable of killing me. I stepped away from him. My own weapon at, at the ready. I <laughs> Why did I say it like that? All right, I'm just, I felt like if I looked away from him, I'd be killed. <laughs> yeah, about to do that. The iron blade suddenly came down. There was an impact on my face. I felt some of my back. So my back teeth break. The blood spurted from my mouth. I'd been knocked onto the floor. I swung the D-sword in my hand frantically. For a moment, I experienced the pain and the light that were caused by mind control. What? what what's that? Thing still working? It wasn't broken? It had to be. I dropped the D sword in despair. It vanished. But the mind control never came. My attack a moment ago had damaged it. <laughs> 
マジで壊れてるじゃねえかこの草かけサクマズ・アイオン・ソード・ストラック・ミー・オン・ド・レフト・レグ・アン・イン・イン・イン・ディスクライブ・ブ・アフォ・ペイン・ラン・アップ・マイ・スパイン・アン・スマッシュ・イン・トゥ・マイ・ブレイン・ナコトナラ・サイショッカラ・ゴーモン・シでも思考誘導しとくべきだったな。なんなら、今やってやろうか。リアルで。よあ Eee. It hurt. The pain was unbearable. Was this pain stupid after p l a n stupid after all? Was there no way to win? Damn it, eh? Two cacara no hakuja, none ni matarashimo, a e r a d e n e g a What happened to my leg? My body. Were they still there? I couldn't move. Just like in the black prison. Nara, I t r o w my no men of my de k o r o s t e m i u g a Huh? I could hear the words clearly, even as my whole body screamed from pain. Tabu mother, she will d e t e n e the row. Probably has it been thirty days? <laughs> the instant I understood what he meant, I forgot the pain coursing through my body. Oh, Wait, what will work? <laughs> He kicked me and, a roll, and I rolled along the ground. Then he started to walk away. <laughs> My throat hurt as I screamed. It was frustrating how I couldn't even speak. <sighs> he was leaving. He was going somewhere. Where? Where else? To where are.、Uh, to, to where they were. He was going after the people I loved. <laughs> I tried to stand up, but the leg he'd struck wouldn't move. I fell to the ground. I hit my face on the floor. My left leg wouldn't move. Was it broken? It was the one place I didn't feel any pain. My body wouldn't move. Why? I'd finally made it out of the darkness, right? I couldn't just let him go. Move! I don't care what moves! Move! Move! Maub. He was going to kill them right in front of me. Kill Aimura? Kill Uki? Kill y- y- Yuto? Kill Kunisato? I wouldn't let him. I wouldn't let him do it. As my vision blurred from the pain, I saw Serika's body lying on the ground. Nonchan Tachi no Kataki wa Toranaka dame. Demo, Watashi no Kataki wa Dame. I howled, and an organ played, and my D sword appeared as if in answer. And then I sliced through the air towards my dad as he walked away. Nani?
Whoa! My dad turned around at the noise, just in time for the desor to impale his throat. And then he slowly fell backward to the floor. I somehow managed to endure the pain that was coursing through my body and stand up. There was blood everywhere on the stage. I avoided it, dragging my unmoving left leg as I walked toward the body that used to be my dad. <laughs> The G sword was still shining as it stuck out of his throat. I made it deeper. When I saw what was left, I didn't feel a sense of accomplishment or anything else. Just an urge to vomit. <laughs> he was lying on the ground. I killed him. I killed my dad. No, 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 no. How could this have happened? Taking revenge for Nono and Yui didn't make me feel any better at all. I didn't feel happy at all. I realized I was crying. I didn't know how long I had been crying, but my tears were red. Everything around me felt like a lie. I was having trouble standing up, and not just because of my injury. This was how it felt to cross a line that you should never cross. <laughs> I tried to smile and, and forget my tears. What was I doing? Was this how it felt to break my promise to Nona? <laughs> Right, Serika. I remembered the re real reason I'd come here. There was something I wanted to ask her. I looked away from Dad and walked over to Serika, dragging my leg behind me. I looked down at Serika and reached my uh, 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 and reached out my hand. I wanted to at least fix up her clothes where they'd been messed up. There was a loud, heavy noise and an impact around my stomach. Okay. What was that? Huh? I looked down at my body, trying to figure out the source of the sound and the noise, and. It was a D sword stick sticking out of my stomach. It was the same one that had taken Nono's life on the roof of the uh, of Akio Academy. Huh? Wait, what's going on? November six, twenty fifteen, Friday, ten fifty p.m. The second Shibuya Restoration Festival was now over. Wait, but what happened? The murmuring among the crowd at Memorial Park s started as soon as the war w ward mayor finished his speech. Some people started. Uh, some people headed straight for the station, glad to be done. Some people were so moved by the speeches given by the victims that they stood in front of the memorial wiping away their tears some people went out to go drinking since it was friday they'd all come to the restoration festival for different reasons but even now when all the planned festivities were over there was still some people who hadn't seen what they'd uh, what, what they'd come for Back 
The whispers started all over the place. And others agreed, even though they, they would never say it. They all looked around with, with searching eyes. Everyone was looking for Takuru Maishido. The same time, Shibuya scrambled crossing. This place was even more packed than Memorial Park, and the reaction was even stronger. <laughs> Some started to say that the whole thing was a hoax, and more and more people began to leave. The ones that didn't move at all were the ones in the masts. They were waiting for Takuru Mayashido more than anyone. But the festival was over. When the heat and passion of the festival began to fade and the reality came crushing in, they began to doubt. He was the mastermind behind all those murders. They thought that it, it would be nothing for him to commit suicide in public. But they were wrong. Or was someone that brilliant capable of making an announcement like that? Then managing to escape. The ones that stood in groups began to stare at each other with their three-eyed masks, trying to guess what the others were thinking. Should they move somewhere with less people? They waited for someone to suggest it. And then something happened that saved them. At the center of the commotion were police officers running somewhere in a hurry. Yeah, just wait. Shinjo kept suggesting that they'd get confirmation, but his boss ignored him. When the information came in, he'd lost his ability to control the situation. He cursed at the phone as they hung up on him. And just spinning around. There we go. <laughs> this was bad. This was really, really bad. I want to know what happened. Shinjo looked at the time. It had already been 10 minutes after he'd gone to Aoba dorm and gotten everyone into the car. What? It was probably the first time he'd ever seen her go pale. Shinjo had repeatedly asked for a source, but it didn't help. From the way his boss had been acting, it was possible that they didn't even know where it had come from. Now that the police knew that Maishiro was at the Hikariwo, Hi there was no time to go to Akihab Akihabara and back. He had to be there. It was his job. He was a detective in charge of the case. And if Maishiro was going to be arrested, he was the only one who could help. <sighs> Getting the kids from Alba dorm was something that 
only he could do. What should he do? He kept asking himself that. That's what he'd remained as a uh, remained. Oh, that's why he remained as a guard. She couldn't mean. He had a bad feeling. Did Kunosata have an international license? Suddenly, his phone began to ring. This time, it was from one of one of his men. There wasn't even time to think about it anymore. He prayed and tossed it as he tossed Kunisata the key. She does flips with the car, does a wheelie with the car. Shinja ran off without waiting for an answer. He turned around. Kunisato had a totally earnest look on her face as she spoke. Huh? Oh! For driving. Shinjo had to force himself not to grab the keys out of her hand. Look it up on the internet. Wrong, Cider. He yelled as he ran toward the... the... he... he carry you What's this light? It was cold. And I was sleepy. My body wouldn't move. Was I... Back in that world? That dark prison? No. I could still feel pain. My senses were still working. Then... What was this? <sighs> I remembered where I was. I passed out? Ah! My back, my stomach! I felt the warmth fading from my body with each drop of blood I lost, but my wounds burned like someone was pr pressing a sol soldering iron up, up against them. And yet, for some reason, I felt sleepy. This didn't make sense. My whole body had stopped making sense. I heard footsteps. They were getting further away. I forced my eyes to open and I looked toward the source of the sound. The first thing I saw was my dad's body. The body of a man I'd killed. Until a moment ago, he'd still been a person. And beyond him, I saw her through my blurry eyes. She was getting further away. It was Serika. She was alive. She was walking. She had just put her phone in her pocket. She was walking across the stage. Probably she was heading for the exit among the high seats. She didn't look back. It 
was a hallucination. At least, it should have been. No, this was... This one was... Left to who could use... No, no one was left who could use mind control. There's something I have to ask you. That's why I'd come. Come on. This was supposed to be my body, right? Why wasn't it moving when I'd tell it to? Serika stepped off the stage. She made her way through the seats to leave. She's about to disappear. No. Don't. Wait! Please, come on, move! Suddenly, I felt a familiar pain in my head. I ob obeyed my intuition and let it go. The D-sword appeared in my hand. That's right, I could do it. Just like I'd done before. I used my powers to fling the sword, D sword at Serika. I didn't care if it landed at her feet or where it landed at all. I just had to stop her. <laughs> Serika sensed it coming and turned around. At the same time, a light appeared around her. Her D sword appeared from within the light and she grabbed it. and easily blocked the incoming blade. When the two swords hit, my vision went white. Was this another delusion? What's going on? What? What's going on? What was I looking at? いろいろ聞きてえがまず理由からいいか。クリスのも殺害する前、その思考を読んだ。彼女は遺言として手紙を残してきている。ああ、涙ぐましいことだな。殺されるのを覚悟して立つってことだ、あいつ。すでに警察
彼らに対して可能な限り思考誘導はかけないあれは脳をダメにするそうだったなああでも最後はもう一回使わせてもらうぜ誘導なしじゃリガロマニアックス相手に勝ち目なんてねえもう一度だけだぞいいな<笑>分かってるよ I could see the two of them talking. It looked like an old movie shown through the projector that was slightly out of focus. But I wasn't really seeing it. The vision seemed to be coming directly into my mind. すでに委員会との関係を断たれているお前が委員会へ戻ろうと野心を抱いているこの作り話を私に信じ込ませろ2つその野心のためにお前は協力者の私を裏切り宮代拓を犯人に仕立て上げようとしているこれも私の脳にすり込め3つしかるべきタイミングで彼の両親を殺したのは私だと私自身の口から伝えるように誘導そして最後は私の生きる目的を変えろ That's right These were probably Serika's memories Were her memories coming into me via the D sword? 俺までその嘘話の中に巻き込むのかよそうしなければならない有村の能力とは別に障害となる人間がもう一人いる。久野里美代だ。あいつか。なるほどな。久野里美代は事情に精通しすぎているが、だからこそ委員会の話をでっち上げる。あの女は委員会のこととなると冷静さを失うからな。私が委員会の情報を持っていると思い込めば絶対に手放そうとしないはずだ皮肉な話だが久野里のおかげで私は宮代の近くにとどまることができるお前おっかねえ女だなそこまで考えてるってのかいや思考盗撮のおかげってやつかこのゲームの登場人物を動かしているのは私だ This game. Game? I remember something. The theory I had come up with in the newspaper club room that it was like the killer was challenging me to a game. That the killer was moving people around like chess pieces. And that they wanted me to be the other player in the game. But once my dad identified himself as a killer, I had given up on, on my theory. I thought. That I was wrong. But maybe. Maybe I was right. Naruto game, ne. Oremo Tanoshi Koto a skida na yo. Mijika yaida to a ye. Teme no jinse no moktegima de kayo to a omone. Yoke na koto a yuana kute yi. O my one yashiro no. Shin no gigaromaniacs no data ga toreba. Sore de yi no da no. Sono yo kyu a mita shti yari. まあ確かにそうだただ何回も言ってるがよ俺がやろうとしてることにタクルの精神が耐えられる可能性はゼロだぜ昔所属してた AH 東京総合病院の地下施設そこの責任者から直々に伝授された拷問だからな彼を見くびるな私も何回もそう言っている壊しちまっていいんだなそこに手は出さないって取り決めたもんなお前に思考誘導の装置さえなければ誰より先に殺していたな面白いなやってみるかクンツカおっとそうだもう一つなんであいつを犯人に仕立てる必要があるお前はあいつが事件を解決すればそれでいいんだろうそれは
<laughs> my cat, my cat's watching the screen. Are you watching? Are you watching? My vision blurred. There seemed to be a chorus of buzzing inside my head. Bzzz. This feeling, it was the same as when I used my power. The same as when I saw the D-sword in the corner of my vision. Another vision came to me through her D-sword. ことんどが勘違いだ。みんなそのことに気づいてない情弱ばかり。でも僕だけは本当に他の人と違う。Was こんな経験をしている人はそんなにいない。だから。僕は本当に特別なんだ。なあ。大量のマスコミが被災者に対して押しかけただろう。まだカオスチャイルド症候群者っていう言葉がなかった頃に、その取材の論調の多くはミンドの高さを訴える者だった。これだけの震災にも関わらず、暴動や略奪などの犯罪
Serika hadn't been real then. But she'd been with me anyway.事件が進んで西条を巧みという人が犯人として注目を浴びてでも結局それをひっくり返してこの絵も僕もとても興奮しました僕が当時新聞部の今もですけどやっていたことの最も大きな形に見えたんですすごいねこの人どの絵は言ってましたどう感でしたはいはいデッボーンズ俺ダクターデッボーンズはいハウズゴーインウェアンド this is the last chapter. I keep thinking we're almost done, but we're not. なんであいつを犯人に仕立てる必要がある。お前はあいつが事件を解決すればそれでいいんだろ。Hey,yeah,hey,yeah, hoping stream is going well. Yeah, I think it's going well. Yeah. How's your day going? How's it going? それは6年前に起きたニュージェネレーションの狂気はそうだったからだ。あの事件も犯人と目された人間が最終的にはその冤罪を晴らし、事件を解決に導いた。お前がニュージェネに関わってんのは知ってるよ。わざわざ日付を調整
they were treating her in what were they treating her injuries right were they doing it in the right order i could make the right decisions that's what i thought <laughs> Suddenly, my parents appeared. That was... Right. It was when I'd run into them at the shelter. They were yelling something at me. E e excitedly. And they grabbed my arm, and I shook them off. <laughs> All I could do then, uh, do then, was open my eyes and stare at them. I'm saved? I remember thinking that. By people who had never cared about me before? I shook my, uh, my arm away again. Saved? Me? Why? These people had always neglected me. Now they were going to save me? Why? Just when I thought that. I saw myself holding my head in pain. My nails dug into my flesh, but the pain didn't stop and I kept screaming inside. No, th this isn't right. Those wrong siders in the class never did anything good before, but they wanted to be good now and they wanted to look at me like I was worthless. I could see myself screaming more. My heart and head felt like they were going to burst. You're going to save me? You, the people who just gave me a thousand yen instead of taking me out to dinner on my birthday? Hell no. I'm not the kind of person who just gets saved by parents who don't even want him. My mom was yelling something, but I couldn't hear it then, and I couldn't hear it now. Shut up! You just think I'm in the way, don't you? I think... I think the same thing. You're in my way. No, I wanted to stay in my room. Alright. <laughs> but... What could I do? What did I want to do? Why was I here? <laughs> That's right. Where's Serika? I cared for Serika on... I carried Serika on my back to get her to the hospital. I couldn't feel her on my back, though. The pain in my head. But... I was doing what I was supposed to do. I was saving her life. Serika would understand that. She always told me I did... Uh, what I did was right. She was always... Always on my side. Suddenly, everything went white. I said shut up. You people should just... Go away forever. Serika saved me. Please, please. That's right. These are probably Serika's memories. That's when I made my wish. To Serika. Serika's memories came into me through the D-Sword. And my memories went into her. And when she knocked away my D-Sword, the vision vanished.
When I came back to reality, the first thing I saw was Sirika's face. It was filled with despair, like she was about to cry. I'd never seen her like that before. I knew immediately that she'd seen the same thing I'd seen. Give me something. I want I want to do. Help me do it. That was the terrible wish I'd made. That was the only reason why Serika Onoe existed. <laughs> Laughter filled the theater. It took me a long time to realize that it was mine. The pain from my leg my dad had broken was getting worse. But the pain in my heart was somehow worse than even that. <laughs> As I rose, Serika started to stagger backward as if she was terrified of me. When I saw her, I, I laughed even more. I survived the worst that my dad could throw at me, and I sing and a single truth was about to drive me mad. I went forward, dragging my leg behind me. I looked and saw where I thought Serika had stabbed me. It stabbed me in the stomach. She'd only cut it, it, it cut a bit of skin on my side. It hadn't even reached my organs. This wasn't a fatal wound, which meant this was also. <laughs> oh, and that's why it all ends on a stage. <laughs> and the sword that Serika had knocked away came back to me. I reached about my hands for it. それで。このまま<笑> やめろ。そうか。父さんがあくまで真犯人役か。僕が父さんを殺して自分の手で終わらせたと思ったところで僕を気絶させて。違う。ねん。それからお前は。ははあ。世間に流す情報の調整をしたのか。<笑> もしかして、さっきスマホをいじってたのはそれ。警察にでも連絡したのか。違う。Even without Irimura, I could tell she was lying. Serika was crying. She was wiping away the tears with her sleeve. She looked like a little girl. No, she didn't just look like a little girl, she probably was one. She was only six years old. だよな。6年前のニュージネ事件で一度あの人は公開処刑になってるもんな。警察に捕まえさせて大勢の前に引きずり出さないといけないもんな。で、僕が危機に陥った時に 父さん。佐久間が真犯人だったっていう証拠が出てきて、僕は一転英雄になる。そういうことか。なあ、ほのえ。My voice was shaking. The laughter was turning into something different. What was it turning into? <laughs> Serika kept crying and didn't answer me. Tears started to fall from my eyes and my vision began to blur. It was if everything in our hearts was becoming tears and flowing out. Everyone 
アリムラの知り合いだったガキタが死んだのもネット記者の渡部が死んだのも南沢千里に見せかけられたハイダが死んだのも伊藤が操られてユイを殺したのもノノが死んだのも全部僕のせいなのかよ Sirica's desword sliced apart the audience seats. But I kept going. Kuno Sato san the Serika didn't answer. I didn't expect her to. But in the end, after I solved it, all that I'd be left with was emptiness and the guilt from what I'd done. That's why I knew what I had to do. Dragging my leg behind me, I finally made it to the edge of the stage. I could see the steps down into the audience area. All that was left was to go down the stairs, and out the door. Serika's expression changed. She was still crying, but she seemed shocked. <laughs> She must have used her mind reading to see what I was planning to do. She ran to the bottom of the stage to block me. But I looked straight at her as if to say that I wasn't changing my mind. What? Circuit raised their desword and pointed it at me. It was a warning not to go any further. But I wasn't stopping now. お前は僕を殺せないだろう。もう一度意識を奪う。目が覚めた頃には全てが終わっている。その時は。何が起こったのかわからないかもしれないが時間が経てばきっと気づく何お前が本当にやりたいことはお前が今考えているようなことじゃない前代未聞の事件を解決した英雄としてこの世界に認められることだそんなこと Sirika's words probably came from reading my deepest parts of my heart. I wouldn't deny that. She was right. If I just let her handle everything, I would be a hero. And if I keep going forward, all that awaited me was destruction. When I thought about that, it was scary. I was terrified. But... But I still... She was still holding the D-sword. It was clear she had no intention of letting me go any further. I grabbed the hilt of my own D-sword and raised it 
uh, uh, and raised it as well. Who are you? I said to her, from the top of the stage, I said the same thing to her that she said to me in that black prison. I could see her on the other side of the D-sword looking hurt. But she must have read my thoughts and realized I wasn't going to change my mind because she slowly came up. The bright lights illuminated her beautifully. I took several steps back the way I had come so I could keep my distance. I must have lost too much blood because suddenly I staggered, my vision blurred. With only my right leg working, I was barely able to keep my balance. I couldn't stop here. I couldn't. どうしてだ。どうして犯人として名乗り出ようとする。いや、どうしてそれが許せるんだ。その情報に踊らされているのは下に集まっている連中、情弱たちだぞ。情報強者のお前が最も嫌う情弱だ。自分たちが偽の情報に誘導されていることに気づきもしない。疑いもしない。映画でも見るような感覚で、お前の自殺を見物にやってきた。くだらない奴らなんだぞ。お前が名乗り
の外あの時に I saw flashes of several different conversations. I didn't know if they were my memories or hers anymore. But each time our D swords collided, I saw another. Sereka wasn't just a normal girl who everybody loved, she was a mastermind who'd set up this whole game for me. And she killed No No and Yui just to lead me to the end. <laughs> The symptoms of blood loss were getting worse. My vision was darkening and I felt like I was about to pass out. What? Ow. She kicked me! The sudden fierce pain in my stomach knocked me off balance. I dropped the G sword and flung up my hand to try and grab it again. She kicked the sword away. It spun all the way to the edge of the stage. I fought through the pain and used my powers on the D-sword. It flew high into the air. Circus screams in rage, but I couldn't stop. The D-sword spun wildly as it launched itself at Serika. Whoa. Bling. She knocked it away, but I wasn't done yet. I used my powers to make the D-sword fly again. The sword attacked her once more. <laughs> She knocked it away again? Each time it came at her, Sirika knocked it down. I couldn't land in an attack. Damn it! Why? Why? <gasps> then I realized that she was just looking at me. She wasn't looking at the sword. That's right, her power. That's why I couldn't hit her. <laughs> The sword lost its energy and clattered onto the floor. I fell to my knees and collapsed. <laughs> Damn it! This wasn't going to work. She could read everything I was thinking. She knew the direction the sword was coming from, or more precisely, the direction I was sending it. This was bad. The room seemed to spin, and sometimes my vision would dim. I couldn't move my arms or legs. I felt cold, like I needed to throw up. <laughs> Sirika said it again, that this was what I wanted, but I couldn't let myself believe her. What should I do? What do I do? What if I changed the direction of the light? to blind her, and then attacked. But the second I thought it, she knew. What if I pretended to make the Jisoo disappear, and then uh, co concealed it somewhere on stage? The second I thought of it, she knew that too. That's <laughs> I didn't have the strength left to attack her myself. Even if I did, it was useless to try and attack someone who couldn't- who, who could read my thoughts. Then what- then what do I do? Th think. 
計なことは考えるな。Think! There has to be a way! There was one? I was the one who created her. Then suddenly I had an idea. Her expression suddenly changed. She was staring at me with wide eyes. Her mind reading meant that she already knew. She already knew exactly what I was thinking. Well, I don't know what you're thinking, but still! When I saw the tension on her face, I was sure that there was still a way I could win. I formed a strong delusion in my mind. When I did, I hit, I, it, it hit. I was hit by a headache, a thousand times worse than when I than when I normally used my powers. It was far worse than having a needle stabbed into my temples. It was like every blood vessel in my head was filled with thorns. The pain was so bad I started to vomit up stomach acid. Wait. Surika tried to run over to me and st and stopped. She kept turning around and looking at the exit near the seats. She seemed to be uncertain of whether she should run, which meant that this idea was going to work. Wait, what was it? What is it? I guess let's keep going and find out. It wasn't something anyone had taught me, but... I was sure that I could do it. According to Kunisato, I wasn't... I wasn't like other psychics. I'm not like the other psychics. <laughs> Who had each gained a single power after being exposed to what she called the casual factor. She said I might be a true gigalomaniac with the power to make my delusions into reality. And in fact, six years ago, I created Serika, a human being. <laughs> I twisted my body upward and screamed. Wait. Ah, a bunch of swords! A huge number of D-swords appeared above my head. Of course, they were all fakes. The closest weapons to me that I could easily imagine just happened to be my D-sword. But I'd be... But, but, but I'd real booted them anyway. They shone like fierce beasts in search of prey. My head felt like it was going to burst. I imagined each blood vessel bursting one after another. Or... Was I really imagining it? Was this going to kill me? But I didn't care. I had to end it here. I had to let my puppet go free. <laughs> Serika changed from one form of the D-sword and sp spread it out as far as it would go. She was going to try and block them all. I screamed. And then sent them all flying at Serika. What happened? The end. And so... Let's see. Let's have a where are they now? Good. It connected. I could hear Arimura and the others calling my name on the other end. I felt so cold and my fingers were shaking. 
I turned the phone to speaker mode and started to type in the data. たとえばですけど自分が高い建物の上の方に住んでいるとして警察に通報しようと携帯を耳に当てた時女がこっちを見て目が合ってしまったんです女はこっちを指さして口を動かしてます何を言ってると思いますか I should have figured she'd know about it. 普通の人ならこう考える。例えば、そこを動くな。通報するな。とかね。1、2、こっちが何階にいるか数えているんだってそう目撃者を殺しに行くためにです被害者側じゃなくて加害者側に立って考えるからということらしいんですけど There was only silence. She must have decided there was no point in answering. She was listening. Demo Bokumo Shojiki, son nano usoda to Mondes Honto no psychopasua, son nako to Moana in Janai de Shoka Edo Gain demo Henry Lee Lucas demo Dare demo in deskedo Mosh Karega Kono Shitsmo Saredara Kito.質問自体が理解できないと答えるでしょうね。明日の晩ご飯とか質問した連中の服が気に入らないとか被害者側でも加害者側でもないどっか遠くから物を考えてると思うんです。ロール車派テストでも何でも彼らの口から出てくる回答
That's right. I had created her. Which means I could do it again. Now she would understand. Kunasato and Shinju could deal with all this. I went to hang up without listening for her answer, but... さっきの質問ですか。もちろん僕も一二三なんて数えないですよ。でも通報するなとも言いません。だってネットで先に答えを見ちゃいましたから。I ended what would probably be the last phone call of my life. And then I forced myself to get up despite the blood I lost. <laughs> my vision blurred and I staggered. But I had to keep going. I couldn't fall over yet. I had an idea while I was while I talked to Kunisato on the phone. But what I really needed to do with my powers about the one way to save her, instead of releasing her. Serika was lying face down unconscious. She was a mess. There was blood everywhere. But it wasn't fatal. She was breathing. She was probably just unconscious. I forced my wounded body over to her. I put both hands around the hilt of the D-sword I'd been using to support myself. The sword had no weight, but it felt like I'd drop. I'd drop if I didn't. She must have heard the footsteps because Sarah could give a soft moan. She slowly raised her head and looked at me. I stood close enough to look down on her face from the side and then what her eyes went wide with surprise and then she started to crawl away from me it sure is a convenient power i told myself now that it was too late she knew what i was thinking without me having even to say it Tada. Serika tried to get away, her fingers digging frantically into the stage as she crawled. She glared at me and got up. But then her strength failed her, and this time she fell flat on her back. She gasped like she was drowning and quickly caught up some, coughed up some blood. There were tears in her eyes. I readied the D-sword. I stopped just once. Her scream echoed violently in my ears. I was going to use my D-sword to change her. I was going to change her into a normal girl. With no powers. Who didn't kill anyone. Who didn't even know that I created her. I was going to rebuild her into a normal girl. But how? I created her from nothing. I knew I could do it. I could make her normal. Yeah, oops. She was crying like a baby. Was she scared? Afraid? Why? She 
She was weeping and her voice was desperate. Her voice, her voice bounced off the stage and hung over the empty seats. No one but me heard it. Her tears fell on the floor, mixing with my blood. I spoke softly as I raised the D-sword high. I remembered what was in Nono's letter. Forget everything and live the same life as everyone else does, but don't get buried among the crowd. That's impossible for me now, but I know you can do it. Sayonara. <laughs> Whoa. February 2016. Three months later. Morning at the children's welfare facility, Aoba dorm. You? When Uki finished washing her face and came into the dining room, Yuta was already getting breakfast ready. She looked inside the kitchen and saw that Yuto had already done all of Uki's work for her. Fine, she thought. I'll do the cleaning myself. Then she sat in the chair without further complaint. Lately, Uki had l learned to make a few dishes without resorting to the recipes a scrapbook that Kurisu and Yui had made. Of course, her food didn't taste quite as good, but if nothing else, she wasn't trying difficult recipes and burning the pan like she did, uh, like she'd been doing right after she came here. After a short wait, Yuta brought all the dishes to the table. Yuta could also make simple dishes for himself now. It was uh, his idea that he'd been working hard at it. Three months after everything had happened, with its owner, Sakuma, and Takaru, Kurisu, and Yui gone, Abudorm itself was in danger. The place had only survived because of Sakuma's salary, so that was natural. But when Shinjo had told them it was safe to go back to Shibuya, they'd both insisted on coming to Alba dorm. Shinjo insisted it was impossible, but surprisingly, it was Momose who helped them out. She called in a few favors, and Alba clinic had become the property of a completely normal private doctor, and some of the clinic's earnings were dedicated to keeping Albadorm alive. Of course, it wasn't a family a family like it was before. The doctor just worked at the clinic. He didn't manage the dorm. Instead, the nutritionist and nurse, both whom said they were acquaintances of Momose's, would come by every day. 
But Uki and Yuto wa wanted to keep as much of their old lives as possible, so they wanted to make their own food. So on weekends and days when the nutritionist couldn't come, the two of them eagerly went to the kitchen. <laughs> Only very recently had Yuto started to talk more. After what had happened to Yui and Nono. And then, when he'd been told about Sakuma and Takaru, he'd become nothing but an empty shell. The one thing that had saved him was that even uh, was that even then he'd stayed close to Uki. He wanted to be with someone. Of course, the wounds in his heart hadn't healed. No, they probably never would. The loneliness and regret would come to haunt him again and again. Uki herself sometimes had trouble sleeping at night. When that happened, she would go to Yuta's room because he was afraid of being alone at night. She would say, and the two of them would endure the terror together. The two of them were a brother and sister. Inseparable now, just like Nono and Takaru had been. Ah, Uki's chopsticks suddenly froze. She didn't expect that answer. She thought Yuta would refuse. They were thinking of accepting new members to Albodorm, which would mean they'd have to use Takaru's in Nono's room. She wanted to save them personally. Nono wasn't coming back, but she wanted to believe that Takaru might. But if Yuto had made his decision as the, uh, as the older sister, she had to support him. So she smiled the best she could and started to eat more of her little brother's cooking. <sighs> the door opened and Hine Arimura walked into the newspaper club room. <laughs> The owner of the room raised a hand, greeting without even looking up, like she always did. She'd learn how to tell it from the sound of the keyboard. Aimura sat in her usual spot and took out a book she was reading. Teru... Mayaki's famous 6,000 lives and deaths. There had been an awful lot of free periods lately, and during each one, she would either come here to, or, or come here or read a book, or work on a novel as part of her literature club activities. My Ma, Ma, Maishiro Kurusu and Ito were gone, so Kazuki was always here alone. And she almost never said anything. There was no need to worry about hearing lies. It was the perfect place for her. After the incident, she spent several weeks in Akihabara uh, before suddenly beginning be being allowed to go back to Shibuya. Allowed wasn't the right word. She'd been dragged back here. She hated it, but even if it, it meant another fight with her family, there was nothing else she could think of doing. There hadn't been any problems with psychics since then, at least publicly. Sometimes Shinjo would call to check on her, but nothing special was going on. But she'd never expect the case to end like it did. She saw an unfamiliar expression on the book, so she decided to copy it down. 
into the notebook. She kept it in the newspaper club. Handwriting was the best way to do this stuff, she thought. There was no class in just... Uh, there was no class in just typing everything out into a computer. She stood up and looked for it on the steel shelves up, up against the wall. But it wasn't where she thought it would be. She reached out her hand and toward the back of the shelf. And then the paper and the papers that had been piled up there fell off. Arimaru and Kazuki froze when they saw w one of them. It was a big map folded many times over. She didn't have to spread it out to know what it was. It was the one newspaper... It, it was the one the newspaper club had put on the wall when they were going over the case. But there was no need for it anymore. So the first thing Kazuki had done after it came back to this room was take it off the wall. Aimura had come back after a, a few weeks later, but she hadn't said a word uh, about it vanishing. No, it would be more accurate to say that she wouldn't. So, it was something that Shinjo had just told her on the phone. Kazuki turned around to look at her. What will you do? Her face seemed to say. Aimura frowned and scratched her head. There was nothing else she could do. That was the promise she made with him. Kazuki nodded and looked somewhere else. Aimura followed her gaze. She was looking at the chairs where Mayashiro and Serika used to sit. For what it's worth, Aimura hadn't sat there a single time since she started coming here. Okay, now it's the end. Dang it. That was Momose's first question after hearing about what just happened at the hospital. Kunosato and Momose both sighed at the same time. Sakama was dead. They'd gone over everything he owned, as well as his body, but learned barely anything. She had found... Hi! She had found, with the help of her very, very strange acquaintance in Akihabara, uh, that Tsukuma had indeed worked at the basement under A.A. Chukyo General Hospital, but nothing else. Oh, my cat knocked stuff over. Here we go. Okay. There was no data about Sakuma left. She hated to admit it, but the committee was good at their work and fast. Even the police didn't seem to know who he was. That night, three months ago, she still didn't know what happened between Maishida Onoe and Tsuka, S S S Sakuma then. But if what she was imagining was correct, especially in the light of the last call with Maishido, there was a need to question what S Serika had told her at Frisa. She talked a lot about the committee, but looked back, there was a good chance it was a lie used to gain Kunisato's cooperation. As proof, even after she'd taken the psychics out of Shibuya, nothing had happened. Her hacker acquaintance had checked his network and hadn't seen anything at all. With no real reason to stay in Akihabara anymore, she'd come back to Shibuya 
But while she was gone, all the threads connecting Sakuma to the committee had vanished. Either she screwed up, or maybe... Is this really the last chapter, or is there another one? Which meant, they simply gave up on him when he was no longer useful. But there was n a lot of equipment that had disappeared from the underground facility. Even if he was the one who moved it, someone else must be in charge of it now. If she could find out who that someone was... Momose looked at Kunisato and tapped her own temples. That was the one route she still had to... Uh, had, it was the piece of evidence she'd chosen to use to get her revenge on the committee. That strange disease that had started showing up in certain victims of the earthquake. Her phone began to vibrate in her pocket. She saw the name on the phone and realized it wasn't time for his usual check-in. That meant something had happened. February 2016. Should I... Should I save this for another time or should I finish it now? No, I'll, f I'll finish it. Who knows how much is left? I keep saying that. Well, I keep saying that in my head. I'm like, it could end at any minute now. <laughs> she slowly stepped into the hospital room. The room was clean, the air was pure. She nodded, satisfied with that. It was disappointing that no one had brought any flowers, but in light of his condition, there was no helping that. The curtain was closed, so she couldn't see f him from here. She walked softly without sound. She approached the bed nervously. She put her hands on the curtain and slowly opened it. And it was the wrong person. There's... Oh, there's no one there. The person she was looking for was laying there. Where? Where are they laying? She sighed in relief. Ah, uh, there you are. <laughs> And then brought her face close to his as if giving a kiss to a loved one. She was close enough that her short hair fell on his face. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's lost a little weight, but... But it was still the face of the boy she'd known for years. Okay, this is... No. She opened the window, and a bird flew in. Fresh air blew into the room, along with some birds. The weather was great. It was the perfect day to go outside. He's sleeping. Oh! そこです。本日午前9時過ぎ、ニュージェネレーションの狂気の再来と呼ばれる連続殺人事件を引き起こした犯人、宮城拓、現場にはアラソッタと見られる警察官の遺体が残されており、なお犯人を病院に収容していた
Here, <laughs> we'll do that. Um, we made it to Chaos Head. We made it to Chaos Child, and now, uh, and then after this, we're gonna do Steins Gate. I was considering not doing another visual novel, but. Uh, on Twitter I did run a little poll and, uh, the, the answer at the end came out to, that you guys would want that again, so, yeah. Steins Gate, uh, next week, maybe, next week, M maybe the week after, who knows. <laughs> no, I know, I know when. But yeah. I don't... Oh. There's more here. Wait. Hey, Taki. Over... Sky end. Oh, a hidden story has been unlocked. <sighs> okay, let's. <laughs> Should we look at the hidden story? <laughs> Endings list. Wait, where's the hidden story? Where do I find that at? No! Music. Endings list. Oh, I was. <laughs> the screen broke! Who broke the screen? Uh. No, I don't think there. Oh, no! I can't find the hidden ending! Dang. Okay, well. <laughs> Where. Oh, wait! No, was it hidden ending or hidden story that I unlocked? I don't know. Yeah, well... Wait. How many are there? How many endings? I'm not... Yeah, okay, okay. Well, thank you for coming and watching. Let's see. Sarah? Ah, here, here, I'll put that there. Let's do that, too. Okay, is there anybody I know it's to raid into? Yeah, okay. Here, let's raid. Thank you for coming and watching. Bye-bye. Mm,